Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. The Bible says, He that cometh unto God must believe that he exists and then he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. The rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Please lift up your hands. There are 11 people that I see in the spirit. Lift your hands inside and outside. The power of God is going to come upon 11 people. 11 people that I see and God is breaking afflictions in families. 11 people at the count of three, the power of God will move inside and outside. There are some of you who are outside. Right now, 11 people. Lord, let your power touch those people right now. 11 of them I see in the spirit. There's one person, I see someone at the outside, outside at the overflow. The power of God is coming upon that one person. No other name like the name of Jesus. There's no other name like the name of the Lord. No other name like the name of Jesus. His word. Worthy of honor. Sing it from the depths of your heart. There's no other name like the name of Jesus. There's no other name like the name. Visit us tonight, O oh God. Do what only you can do. Let your people know that you are in the midst of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. I welcome everyone tonight. We apologize for those of us outside. I want you to know that no matter how far you are, the Lord will touch you this night. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not come to seek an idol. You have come to seek the living God.
Hallelujah. One of the things that the Lord has been doing and will keep doing in this place is revealing to us the mysteries of the kingdom. Everyone say the mysteries of the kingdom. The Bible says it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. The Lord declared that this is a year of light and dominion. Dominion that comes through light, not guesswork. Dominion that comes through understanding. Psalm 82 from verse 5 says, They know not, neither will they understand. And so they grope in darkness and the earth is out of course. Said, but have I not said ye are gods? Are you following me now? And all of you are children of the most high. He said, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. The advantage you have in the kingdom, listen to me. The advantage you have in the kingdom is not just that you have declared the lordship of Christ over your life. But you have come to a point where you have spiritual understanding. You understand how this system functions. And then the things that used to be a mystery are no longer a mystery to you. Because you know that there is an operation that governs them. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, what you know in the kingdom stays with you. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? When you know it, he said they are life to those who find them. That means they sought for it. They are life to do, not to everybody. They are not life to every Christian. They are life to those who find them. And so as God opens our eyes to see these things in the spirit, we must, we must be passionate about making them part of our lives. The question is, how many of us are really willing to apply the things we are hearing? It's, it's, you see, the, 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 the issue with the body of Christ may not necessarily be lack of revelation, but our inability to take the word of God. And make it become part of our life in truth. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. Feel this damn. With your spirit, Ephesians chapter 3. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Again, we welcome those of us who have come from far. May the Lord bless you. Your life will never be the same in the name of Jesus. Verse 9. Ephesians chapter 3. From verse 9. By the way, let me, let me appreciate as many of us who were able to embark on the fast. I know that some of us didn't fast. Praise the Lord. But for as many of us who opened up ourselves, the Bible says, He that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life everlasting. It says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Men can be mocked, but God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, Hallelujah. Whatsoever a man sows, that man will. 
We are sowing to the spirit and we understand that there is a reward. Say there is a reward. Say it one more time, there is a reward. Brothers and sisters, not everything in the kingdom is a gift. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are certain things that are rewards. If everything in the kingdom is a gift, what then is the reward of obedience? Hallelujah. It says, there remained a rest for the people of God. Although they are the people of God, there is still remained a rest. It says, let us labor to enter that rest. For he that has entered that rest has ceased from his works. Hallelujah. So I want to really salute every one of us. I know for many of us, doing a dry fast like that may not be very, your body, because you are living in the body, may not be easy. But you see, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Hallelujah. It doesn't kill. Don't let any man fool you. It does not kill. It does something to you in the spirit that until you are spiritually minded, you may never understand. You see, I keep saying it. If I ask this sister to stand, stand where you are, without telling her the reason why she should stand, huh? and the benefit, whatever she will gain for standing, she will be wary. Are you getting my point? And there's every tendency that she will compromise. But if I tell her, stand here, because somebody is about to pass, let him locate you and bless you. Even when she's tired, there is a higher revelation that is beyond the pain of her body. And it keeps her. This is the revelation that makes men spiritual. So although your body is weak, Paul says, so then, death works in us. That life may work in you. Physically speaking, your body is weak. You see everything and you want to take it. Even if it is, even if it is Vicks Lemon Plus or what. You just want to take anything that can help you. The clearest proof of obedience is when you have the opportunity to disobey. That's when your obedience is perfected. If I rob you of an opportunity to obey and I don't give you an option, you are not really obedient. That's why there was another tree in the Garden of Eden. So that the will of man could freely choose. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you. May God bless us. We will reap the benefit for sure. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me also use this opportunity to salute all of the workers. I was just thinking about the workforce we have in this ministry. Believe me, you may not understand the enormous responsibility that working in this ministry entails. You must love God to be a faithful worker. They are bounded by love and um, I can only imagine trying to do all of the things they are doing while praying and fasting. Complete dry fast. The Lord will honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. My Bible tells me that God is no man's debtor. He will reward you your labor of love. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Out of the ashes of my dying today I see the breaking of a brand new day In which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand new day. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3. That's where we are. Verse 9. It's projected so we can just look to save time. And to make all men see what is the what? Of what? It says the fellowship of the mystery. To make men see what is the fellowship. The resultant effect of our partaking 
in the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ verse 10 to the intent that means this is why he's now revealing to us the mystery that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the multifaceted wisdom of God. That means that the wisdom of God is shrouded in mysteries. And every time God wants to display new dimensions of himself, he opens people, he grants them access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. I give all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Brothers and sisters, we reign in this kingdom on the strength of our knowledge of the mysteries. Hallelujah. Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is not about claiming, I take it. No. Dominion is the resultant effect of the spiritual understanding of this system. The laws that have been put in operation. Hallelujah. And how to be able to work with these laws. To ensure that the kingdom of God comes across a territory. So dominion has nothing to do with just trying to claim. It's not about jacking yourself and trying to believe. When Jesus walked upon the earth. Every time he looked at things. He interpreted them on the strength of his knowledge about the mysteries of the kingdom. When he saw the winds and the waves. He didn't join the other people to say I think we are in rainy season. He looked well and he said no this is demonic. Are you getting what I'm saying now? All through the Bible. All those who were able to, by reason of some spiritual means, have access to the mysteries of the kingdom, they were the ones who reigned in their generation. Isaac understood something about spiritual laws. And when men were running away for famine, he sowed in that land. And he reaped a hundredfold. Hallelujah. The Bible says the Philistines envied him. He increased, he worked strong, he made progress. Moses had an encounter and there was something that Moses knew. He knew that his rod was the rod of God and that that rod could do mighty things. Brothers and sisters, those who will be featured in this end time move of God are not just men who say, God use me. They are men who will have to understand the ancient keys that kept the heavens and the earth closed and that opened them at will. If you do not understand this key, you will die like a member. The world is becoming spiritual every day. I hope you realize. It used to be physical when giants and great men will threaten others. Then it now became intellectual. Hallelujah. So your dominion is on the strength of your knowledge of intellect and, and having 
knowledge of your biological environment and so on and so forth. But before Christ comes, it is they that know their God. They that know is the same word know like a man knowing a woman. They that have come into practical intimacy that has proofs. They that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. I don't want to live my life guessing hoping i'm right hoping that the laws of the spirit that are being operated are the correct ones only to find out that it's not like that the bible says awake thou that sleepest and christ will give you light he said walk circumspectly as wise not as unwise in the days that will come hear me those that do not understand the mysteries of the kingdom will die like men. men. Mm. But they looked at Paul and Barnabas and they said the gods have come to us. They called them the Greek gods, Zeus and Hermes. Because, I, 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 oh my God. Look at the Bible says how that um, Peter now, right? A snake beat his hand, a viper. And he just shook it. And they said this is not an ordinary human being. Imagine, imagine if all Moses had to bring the people out of Egypt was a desire to stop seeing people suffering. You know he would have died right there? Right there in the palace. That's what a lot of people are carrying. They have zeal. Lord, I want to save my family with zeal. Zeal without knowledge will end you in disaster because you will enter territories where you do not understand the codes of operation and your zeal will frustrate you. It will make it look like Jesus did not die. There are many people who have sustained casualties. Some people went to their villages out of zeal and they set altars on fire. They set shrines on fire. Before it finished burning, half of them were para was paralyzed from top to bottom. Like the temple, the curtain that tore when Jesus died. Half of them from top to bottom. Left hand side or right hand side. What do you know that sponsors your audacity to confront evil? What secret have you found? Those of us in ministry... What have you found that assures you that ministry will last? Mm. He says, I found your word and I did eat them. And it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. What have you found? What have you found that gives you confidence? In this wicked society that we live in. What have you found, brothers and sisters? In Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 15 downwards, the Bible says Jesus found, he found it, where it was written about him, the prophecy of Isaiah. And he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled. What have you found that gives you a guarantee that you will be married? By now you know being beautiful is not enough. What have you found? What is your spiritual advantage? When all else fail, what do you stand on? Job is one man I have come to respect and love. When you study the book of Job, ayah, This was a man who had all kinds of catastrophe in his life. Do you know what it means for a man to be the richest man in the East? The East has always been associated with wealth. Right? Wise men came from the East. Job was such a... He said, in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord were upon my tabernacle, the young men saw me and bowed their heads. The old men saw me and they stood up. What kind of
Joseph influenced the Job command. And then all of a sudden, in one day, everyone say one day. Say it one day. It was not one prophetic day. It was one literal day. They came to Job and said, Job, your children, they are all dead. Your cattle, your house, everything. And all that Job was left with was his wife and his health. When everything disappeared, Job checked around, what mystery do I know that can help me now? And Job said, he blessed the name of the Lord and said, naked I came and naked I will return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How can a man speak like that? Do you not know that there must be something you know that makes you to give thanks like that? Your children, your cattle, everything. Job did not know that there is a possibility of knowing what can happen in the spirit. I hope you know that the meeting that happened in the spirit was an advantage that was given to us by the person who wrote that book. Those in the earth realm did not know that something transpired like that. Little did they know that the sons of God came and Satan was part of them. And he said, Satan, where are you coming from? That means Satan does not stay in one place. And that means Satan is not omnipresent. Are you seeing that now? And Satan said, from my voyage around this territory. And he said, while you went around to families and territories, did you come across a man called Job? Satan said, I know him. I've seen him. I've seen him. I destroyed other families, jeopardized other people. But when I came to Job, I saw a level of fortification that frustrated me. Come on now. This is a conversation happening in the heavenlies. Whereas Job was minding his business here in the earth realm. Imagine what is being said about you in the spirit. And you are here just walking around. Naive. And you become a victim of the result of meetings where you did not participate in. I refuse it. I refuse it. The Bible says they know not, neither do they understand. Men discuss things in the spirit. And humans in the earth realm receive the result of the meetings. And someone gets up in the morning and returns back with one leg. That is the result of a meeting that was carried out. You were not there, but you were the victim of it. Don't let anyone fool you. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Someone gets up in the morning. Blesses the name of the Lord. Dresses well and you carry your, your fire to the office. Only to return in the evening with a sack letter. Can I tell you something? When you understand the mysteries of the kingdom. You will know that nothing just happens in the earth realm. Jesus gave us a picture. He said let it be done in the earth as it is. That means the earth is always a reflection of something that happens already in the heavens. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you learning something? My passion is to help you see from a spiritual lens. To give you a new vista so that you do not join men. You don't call what they call conspiracy, conspiracy. You can step home on the strength of a higher spiritual advantage. And you know what law to engage. This is what makes you more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. That means if Job had cursed God, he would have activated a law that would have killed him. Are you getting that? Because his wife gave us a revelation. She knew that that law existed. She said, Job, I'm your wife, but I'm tired. Do you want to die fast? Curse God. This is another revelation on its own. I don't know how you read your Bible, but I have positioned myself to see light in everything in the world. I don't read my Bible to have sermons or to crime scriptures. They are life to me. There are certain things that have intrigued me about the book of Job. One of it is the ability, hear me, the ability to invoke God 
and then God comes down. How did Job do it? Did he use a magic formula? Is it not in your Bible? Job summoned God and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords showed up. Right now we use all kinds of instruments and waste time for days. We say we are trying. Let's call down the presence of God. Job, a man in his pain, said, "Lord, I demand a meeting with you." Man, Brothers and sisters, what you know can make you look like a god upon the surface of the earth. Hmm. Who is God speaking to tonight? It's time to rise up. There is a new status. There is, there is, there is an enlargement in the spirit. God wants to give you capacity to reign experientially. Oh, I sense the presence of God, strong and mighty in this place. And Job refused. And then another meeting was held in heaven. And Satan said, I, I have an explanation as to why Job didn't curse you. Because he's still healthy. He said, every man can give thanks. It's not unusual. That means as I went around the earth, I saw those I afflicted, but I left their help and they still gave thanks. He said, touch his body. God said, really? All right. Go ahead and touch his body. A man was minding his business and a baller came out. Are you seeing that? Those boils. Hold on. Those boils, where did they come from? They were direct. It was based on an instruction. Like a text message you send and it will go to the person you sent it to. Job just found out that boils and blisters were coming out of his body. And his wife said, this is it. I've tried for you. We have, after all, we've had plenty of children. So if it's faithfulness, I have proven that I'm faithful. It's time to go curse God and die. She wasn't sick. She did not know that it was not because she was standing strong. But she was not part of the meeting. The, the discussion was not about her. There are so many people who have not received any attack from darkness. They think it's because their spiritual life is strong. The day your file is open, you will see how weak you are. They laugh at others. Hold on. I'm very serious tonight. They are lazy. They don't pray. They don't fast. They say, I'm not praying. I'm not fasting. I'm not doing anything. But the devil would dare not touch me. Hold on. In the book of Job, there was a discussion. Nothing happened to the wife of Job. She didn't become barren. She, she was standing close to a man with a disease that could contact her, but nothing happened. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed tonight? And then, when Job's body was sore, dogs came to lick his body. The Bible tells us, that there were certain people that came from different territories of greatness and they sat down for seven days they were using the wisdom that made them great to analyze what what law would have been violated to make god judge a man like that and for seven days they were brainstorming after seven days they looked and said kai job you sinned mm -mm. We, we have checked everything the, the, you sinned." job said don't talk like that about me. God will curse you. Better keep, if you don't know what to say, and Elihu reserved himself. Elihu was still checking. He said, ah, ah, the law of creation, the mystery of longevity. What law did Job break? This way, other people were just moving around. Ah, Job, sorry. But others said, no, let's check these laws. See, brothers and sisters, there is light that makes you different. Other people looked at the heavens and said, why is today bright? The wise men said, no way. Something is happening in the earth realm. Something is happening somewhere. And they started tracing it. Other people were saying, please, so let's dry the clothes very fast. Whereas salvation had come. In Herod's palace, the spirit of the Antichrist communicated quickly. He said, another king has been born. Herod, do something about it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Brothers and sisters, there are mysteries. When Jezebel, I told you that Jezebel is a system, isn't it? 
That's the she goddess, the system, the antichrist system. Jezebel was married to Ahab. The spirit came into her. Why? Because Ahab represented governance. And she knew it was a mountain that held relevance. So she occupied there and she was practically the one ruling. Are you getting my point? And Jezebel swore when she heard that they destroyed the prophets of Baal. She said, Elijah, I must remove your head. Elijah went up to heaven. Now the spirit of Elijah came in John the Baptist. Jezebel re-entered Herodias again. Are you seeing? And that head of John the Baptist, she got it. That was why when they birthday down, she said, no, there is a score. He knows. <laughs> there is such ignorance in the earth, man. We walk around. It's not our fault. It's the fault of all of the pastors, apostles, prophets, all of us that claim that we are men of God. Because we are stewards, the Bible tells us, of the mysteries of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Open my eyes, oh God. Open my eyes. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. When God calls you, can you have it amplified? Is it possible? Yes. Please, if you are in ministry, don't be in a hurry to rush or go on air. Are you getting my point now? Many of us are in a hurry. I want to go for a radio program and say what? Make sure you have something to say. It says, so then, let us apostles be looked upon as ministering servants of Christ. And what? Trustees of the mysteries, the secret purposes of God. That means when God calls you, your call tilts you in a position in the spirit where you have an advantage of access to the mysteries of the kingdom. And if God blesses you with a congregation and you are wasting their time, telling them a lot of junk and jargons, the Bible says you are not a steward. And I refuse to allow you to be ignorant. You will be empowered with light. So when men are running like the nation of Israel, away from Goliath, you will run to Goliath like David. David knew something bigger than a little stone. David knew something. He had, he understood something. There is something you must know that can make you bold. That a man will look at you and say, do you know I can sack you from this walk? <laughs> You don't just do this foolish Pentecostal laugh. We laugh and they still sack you. You are laughing without revelation. We do stupid things in the body of Christ. Ah, God forbid you will not sack me. The next day, you are collecting the letter and you are going out. And you come and meet the pastor that taught you whatever he taught you. And he says, what happened? You mean they sacked you? It's an embarrassment to redemption. Well, it has happened. But Elijah was a man of like passion like us. The Bible says, and he prayed earnestly that there may not be rain. How can one man didn't consult with the geographers, didn't consult with anybody, did not even use a public address system. He just said, on the strength of what I know, I understand that this territory has been given unto me as an ambassador. And I speak higher. Days will come when men will speak. We will speak when we have something to say. Not just to make noise. Men will come. Look, let me tell you something. Times will come when the church will determine the events in Africa. And determine the, the events across this nation. It's not to get money from politicians. Because you see, the Shunammite woman was a very wealthy woman. And when the prophet came, he said, what should I do to you? He said, should I talk to the governor? That means Elisha was not a small man. He could summon the governor. Say, you know what happened for you to sit down there. Are you ready to listen or you are ready to follow those who were disobedient just like you? Having the readiness to judge all disobedience when our own obedience is complete. 
Hallelujah. One of our one of our workers was sharing with me this afternoon a very touching testimony. He went on IT. He's still on IT. Brothers and sisters, as an IT student, first and foremost, there were two places that were paying him some very interesting amounts. When he told me, I was very surprised. That's the first miracle. Second miracle is that when he went there, the owner of the company where he was, he was doing his IT said he wanted his son to be the manager of the place and since the son is not available, he should come and be managing the place. You want a job. The question is, what do you know? How do men get jobs? What have you been taught that brings a job? Application, submit your CV, wait. Is that true? Could it be that what you know is not the truth? That a thing has existed for a long time does not mean it is the truth. Listen, we need to begin to probe the foundation, the things that make up our ideologies. Start asking questions. Don't just absorb anything like that. Start asking questions. Why must that growth disappear and appear? It is in your body, but it is not within your control. It's violating a law. Already, it tells you that is demonic. How can some, because everything in your body should grow at the same rate. Now, this growth is not growing at the same rate. So, which life is sponsoring it? You did biology. Something else must be sponsoring that supernatural growth. It took you 20 years to look the way you are. It takes three days for a boil to come out like that. But when you are not interested in probing it, and it does not cause you to go to the secret place and say, Lord, what meaneth these things? I'm tired of allowing things to just pass. Hallelujah. Are you receiving something? I refuse to live my life based on guesswork. It's a terrible way to live. Brothers and sisters, I have a question for you. What is the guarantee that you are going to celebrate Christmas this year? Look at me. What is the guarantee? Is there, is there a spiritual principle that can give you some kind of assurance? Or do we just walk and whatever will be, will be? I know this is challenging and I don't mean to hurt anyone, maybe of the demise of your loved ones, but I'm, I'm encouraging you. What is the guarantee that you're not going to celebrate? See, let me tell you. Many of us have not confronted these issues. We've, we've forgotten about it and we've run away. When you run away from a thing, you have not defeated it. When you stand and face it and triumph over it. Hallelujah. Man of God, what gives you assurance that your ministry will keep growing from glory to glory? See, people have been saying they like me. Hey, people, you, you better, you better find an authentic revelation. Because one moment they said crucify him. I mean they said he gave us bread. We will force him to be king. The next moment they said crucify him. Can my life be so in order? Huh? When you pray for the sick, what gives you guarantee that they will be healed? Your pastor told you, lay hands on the sick, they will be healed. You saw him lay hands and they were healed. You say, me too, I will do it. Is that it? Or hands were laid on me and they say, you will now have the healing anointing. Is that it? I'm probing our convictions. And you will find out that many of us are not standing on the rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand.
What happens to you when they suddenly look at you? And listen, some of us come from territories where witchcraft is very open. What happens when you go maybe to your village or somewhere, for God's sake, please listen to me, and somebody looks at you and says, Pastor Femi, you will not get married. This is an agreement we have had. What do you do? And I say, I will show them. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Let's not be childish this night. What will you do? What revelation? What key will be ignited? If someone, if I meet you now, Jimmy, and I say, you are 10 koinonia, you say, yes, I even heard you sing. And I said, sorry, I've been going to a native doctor all my life. Please, here's the charm he gave me. Help me and break it. Take What are you going to tell him? Book for counseling? Don't just laugh. I hope you get what I'm telling you. We are the light of the world. We are a city that is set on a hill. Break, help me, destroy this charm. I'm tired of it. And you hear that the last person who really held it died. That's when everybody says, you know, the way this world, this wisdom is profitable to direct. All these kinds of scriptures that emerge out of fear all right look up what gives you confidence huh that they are not plotting an evil plot to kill you this night is it impossible at see I'm not making you afraid. I'm teaching you how to be victorious. Many of us think by running away from this. Say, don't think about these things. I refuse to think about I know that the Bible says set your mind on things above. But Jesus, is, he, is it not your Bible where death? He said, oh death, I'm talking to you. Where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? If you cannot confront, see, eternal life is not life after death. Eternal life is authority and victory over death. There are many things we cannot confront in the body of Christ. As I'm talking now, some of you are saying, please, so allow me to get home safely first before you say all of this. What revelation did Jesus have that made him sleep when the boat was physically almost capsizing? How do you know whether your roommate has Ebola or not? Is it not till doctors say the person has it? How do you know? How do you know? Maybe since last year you have been passing those who had it. Look at this. A madman eats from the trash can. They teach us that it is not healthy. Abi, answer me. Is it not true? You spent how many years studying that reality? They thought if you eat, there are all kinds of microorganisms. A madman comes to sit and turns the dustbin upside down. And he helps himself all through that night and gets up, cleans his body and moves. Why cold? You are in your room. You are lying down. And the cold, you have to add jacket and blanket. The madman is talking to himself and just strolling on barefoot. Rain is just beating him and he's looking up and laughing. And you're saying, oh boy, this poor man. And the man is laughing back at you. Correct? And after three months, that guy is still healthy and strong. They say that there's crisis everywhere. They are running, the guy is moving around and talking nonsense. And the crisis will finish, the guy is still moving around. Question, who is really mad? This guy, because there is no hope of getting sick. There's no hope of even treating him. You will see him enjoy himself, he will leave the wound there. Flies disturbing it, you will leave it there, the wound will heal by itself. No, no, nothing. Could it be that there is something we have learned that has given the devil advantage over us? Could it be that there is something we have been taught that if we did not know it, 
we would not be this fearful. Technology has increased our fear because it has opened us to the possibilities that exist in this realm. You watch a movie and all of a sudden you just realize that cabbage can kill. You never knew. You ate cabbage, you stole it, you went to people's farm, you looted their products, nothing happened. Now you watch the movie where cabbage killed somebody and you said, this is it. This is it. Hear me, don't just laugh. I'm, I'm probing our convictions. It's time to ask questions. Not to be a rebel, but to ask questions. Everybody marries at 35. I mean, too, I grew up and I saw it like that. I, wouldn't you ask questions? I say, no problem, I'm 22. People served in church. They married at 37. You have not asked questions why they still serve and that happened. Could it be that your generation or your lineage is crying for a savior? And saying, Lord, will you not raise somebody? And God says, you come for koinonia. There is something you must know that will equip you. You need to stamp it at the devil somewhere. Oh, the beauty of light. All of a sudden, you step home and you tell them, I brought good news. You see why the gospel is called good news? What have we been giving people? Bad news. All sorts of bad news. That means what we are preaching is not the gospel. Hallelujah. And you step home and you look at a lady who has not been married. And you tell her, I'm not only going to pray for you. I will tell you what is wrong. It's not about you are a prophet. It's spiritual intelligence has made you prophetic. Hallelujah. Knowledge opens up the prophetic dimension in everyone. And so you look and you say, sister, there are certain truths you need to know. And when you know, you will walk out of this. And you begin to share those truths. And as you share, you will see the power of God. Last week, I think there was a gentleman that they brought. They had been, the one I announced, they had been on my case with that guy. I heard the guy was on a bike, minding his business. I don't know which corner he entered. One demon just fell on his head. The guy started speaking nonsense at once. No negotiation. It's amazing how the devil does not consult with us to try to afflict us. And this gentleman, the family members were confused and all of that. And I said, come for Koinonia. And after the meeting, I didn't even know because I kept announcing, you know, we we're about going and they, they brought the guy. I said, sit down there. When I saw him, I said, my friend, you are going to be delivered now. I was not asking him a question. I was not trying to say, do you have faith? Is your faith working? What size? Is it weak faith or strong faith? All I know is that that demon is living. Period. When you truly have money to give somebody and he asks you for money, you will say, can your hand stretch well or small? Are you ready to take? Take. When you start giving excuses and say, hey, there's, I'm expecting, you know, there's one, this is my uncle, the way this Nigeria is. All those long stories are, they are trying to point to one thing. There's no money in your pocket. It's as simple as that. This is how it is spiritually. When we begin to give a lot of excuses and stories, it's a sign that we have not held on to something solid. Oh, that God will make you a savior. This is what this is all about. Brothers and sisters, that God will make you a savior. Forget about the challenges today. Are you getting my point? Don't feel bad. Forget about it. But you tell yourself, I have paid this price once and for all. I said something last week and let me say it again. There has been this new discovery that has been stopping a lot of weddings, right? SS and AS. Are you aware of that? Lover boy, are you aware? Are you aware that this can jeopardize your destiny? That is not just enough to be in love. Are you aware of the implications, the questions you will be asked? I was told a very pathetic story of one guy who honestly had been seeing a sister. This guy had prayed. He was so convicted. He was so happy. And they went out on their first date. He was so happy. And then the lady told him, I think whether I'm SS or something, and said, this is the reality. And the guy said, whether he was AS or this. You see, it's a little issue. But now I have your attention. 
Because there are many of us that are probably asking this question, is this how my life will be? But there is a way out. If you don't believe there is a way out, we don't deserve to call God, God. There is a way out. Oh, there is a way out. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than this. The scripture I just read says that we have been called into the fellowship of these mysteries. That means the scrolls have been unlocked. Access has been given to us. Go and find out what it takes to reign. Listen, revelation is not knowing what God has said. Revelation is making it, knowing how to make it work in your life. That's revelation. It's not just what God has said. It's knowing how to make it work in your life. Knowing how to make it work in your life. Imagine that with the revelation you have now, after this meeting, you will run. Run to a clinic where you know that somebody that you have been praying and trusting God for, huh? who has been praying and say, well, this is God that brought this thing. And you just tell him, no, I've discovered something new. And I have come to prove it to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, arise from this hospital. And all of a sudden, Joshua Selman was not there. Your HOD was not there. But the God you serve was there. And you will watch that person get up. And your name is brother. So, 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 and so. And all of a sudden, you, you go back. See, there is a joy when the word works for you. Not that it is made to work for you. When you provoke it and you come with a testimony, you know that the word of God is alive. When you pray for someone, and the person says, do you know, I didn't even tell you the gravity of what I was suffering. It's like, look at the gentleman who was speaking. This is a growth. A growth is not something you lie about. For those of you who don't believe in miracles, how do you fake a growth? You can fake, like many of you think, we men of God around do. You can fake that, okay, genotype changed. But do you fake a baby? How do you fake that a woman was barren and now is holding a baby? How do you fake that somebody could not walk and is now standing? There are mysteries. Everyone said there are mysteries. And I'm planting a hunger in every one of us to begin to explore the mysteries of the kingdom. Oh, there are mysteries. When it was time to judge the prophets of Baal. Elijah said, let us go to a mountain. It, he said, no, 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 no. There is a mystery we must invoke. Let's go to a mountain. And Baal said, I know what you are going. I know where you are going. I will meet you there. Other people were saying, why are they going? The ignorant ones always remain in the valley. Those who have knowledge climb the mountain. When they got there, he said, this is how we do it. You invoke Baal and I'll give you enough time. Brothers and sisters, they started calling on Baal. The Bible says they started cutting themselves. What did they understand about sacrifice and the presence of a God? They were cutting themselves to, to produce blood. They wanted blood to come out because they knew that blood is a language. It's a magnet in the spirit. They Look at how they were walking a lot of spiritual laws. And Elijah was laughing. He said, I know what you are trying to do. I'm sure Baal is sleeping. If you were the one, will you be laughing or you'll be praying? I say, Lord, let this thing not happen the same way it's happening. I, I, don't disgrace me here. On the strength of spiritual knowledge, a man was laughing at the devil. When it was time, he said, uh uh, there is a protocol to spiritual things. We don't do things foolishly. Let me have 12 altars. Ah, the Spirit of God said, a man of intelligence. Somebody would have just said, let me now show you. Oh God. And you, we do all kinds of things. And the devil said, this is it. He said, let me have 12 altars. And when there were 12 altars, he set up everything. Ah, 
He said, so that you don't think that we manufactured fire, pour water. The foolish people were pouring water. They did not know that there is a mystery of the spirit, the water, and the blood. The Bible says when it comes to the earth, these three entities can open any door. He says there are three that bear witness in heaven. The spirit, the word, and what? The Father, the Spirit, and the Word. But it says when it comes to the earth, there are three elements. Their coexistence will open any door. He says the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And Elijah said, pour water. They were foolishly pouring water. When they finished, he said, oh God. And see the fire that came? The Bible says the fire came and licked up everything. Elijah said, chase them. Kill every single one of them. When he killed them, Jezebel had it. What law was operated? What law? Who is this guy? And suddenly she realized that Elijah was not a normal human being. And Elijah said, I'm done. I came to judge this she goddess called Jezebel. Because her prophets prospered. And the prophets of God were in hiding. But one man was bold. Although there were many prophets, they couldn't come out. They were hiding. Elijah was taking fresh air. They came to disrupt him. He said, fire next fire the third people say we, we are begging you it's not like we are forcing you we are begging you we left our wives at home we are begging you everybody say mysteries say mysteries the occultic realm and witchcraft manipulate people through mysteries are you getting my point now they use spells. They use enchantments. They don't need to see you. They make pronouncements. And when they make those pronouncements, when it comes, if there is darkness in you, it will prevail. Because they are called rulers of darkness. That means their, their dominion is activated when there is darkness. They are called rulers of darkness. But when they come, and they see light. See, all this, I am uncursable. I am unkillable. You better understand the mysteries of the kingdom that activates those realities in your life. Because although you have been claiming and jumping, look at your life. It's already happening. I'm not scaring you. I'm telling you that there is more than what we have been taught. And brothers and sisters, if you do not open your eyes to see, you may not reign in life. There are many churches. There are many pastors struggling. I want crowd. I want this. I want that. And they do not know that there are mysteries in the kingdom. The Bible says, listen. It says, if I be lifted up. Have you read that scripture? Huh? Emoji, let me give you a little clue. If I be lifted up, when a man of God keeps lifting himself, get ready for empty pews. He says, if I be lifted up, I will what? Draw all men unto myself, not unto a man of God. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men. When you keep drawing men to yourself, you will find out that there is very little you can give them. But when you draw men when, when, when you reflect Christ, you stand as an ambassador, God himself. The Bible says, and God added daily to them as many as should be saved. Paul can plant, Apollos can water, but increases exclusively of God. Hallelujah. Tell me what can I do? I can live without you. I can live without you. Tell me what can I do? I can live without you. Listen. Do you know that your family is under bondage? Because there is a mystery that has not been unlocked. Listen, listen, listen. There are mysteries are like spiritual codes of operations. 
I've said it again during our series on mysteries of the kingdom. But I'll say it. Mysteries are like codes of operation. Look at me. If you have a drug, right? Just give me a viral cup or anything that I can use. If this is a drug, please look at me. Pharmacist. I'm not a pharmacist, so forgive me. Whether what I'm saying is right or wrong, let's just accept it. Are you getting my point now? In the making of this drug, certain things have been programmed. This drug is like a machine. Is that true? You don't look at it and say, Panadol, don't by any means go to my leg. I'm okay there. The trouble is by this side of my head. Better find a way of positioning yourself and sub what is there. No. No. You pick it up, carry water, close your eyes, throw it in your mouth and take water. You smile. You go back. The Panadol has been programmed to look for what is wrong. Because even you, you don't know what is wrong. You, are, you only know what you feel is wrong. Is that true? So when you go to a doctor, he looks at you and he says, Doctor, I, I don't know what is My eyes, he says, it's not eyes. He says, I'm, I'm the one going through it. I'm telling you, he says, it's not your eyes. Just keep quiet. Take this, take that. And after two days, you come and say, ah, ah. Doctor, I've been, I started giving myself medication for the past one week. The eyes, the pain has even increased. Say, who asked you? It was not eye problem. It's the symptom of something else. Listen, mysteries are like spiritual programs. When they come into your territory, it's like an atomic bomb. They open up and they begin, those codes start writing themselves upon your family. So there could be mysteries that invoke barrenness. Listen to me. There could be mysteries that invoke academic failure. There could be mysteries that invoke late marriage. These mysteries ascend through whatever spiritual means. Dreams, enchantments, it says, in six things shall he deliver you. Yea, seven things. It says, you shall be delivered from the scourging tongues of men. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So this code lands like an alien. And it begins to type out in your family that which it was programmed to do. Because mysteries work like the word of God. It's a mimicking. I told you that Satan was called what? Lucifer, the light bearer. He was the one who kept the revelations of the spirit. No word returns to the sender until it accomplishes what it was returned. If for any reason it returns to the sender, a higher word sent it away. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it says, so shall my word be that proceeded forth from my mouth. It shall not return. Hallelujah. It's like an SS1 student who tells a junior student, go and fetch water. And an SS3 student says, go and sleep. Who will he obey? If the SS1 student says, I sent you, he says, mm -mm, no, please. My school father says, I should go and sleep. I'm going to have my siesta. The SS1 student is now, he has joined two of them. Is that true? The integrity of the SS3 student and the SS1 student is what will be. And he says, I will punish you in front of this one to let you know I'm your senior. Or you kneel down. You go and fetch the water and give the junior student and he will use. That's a way of humiliating him to establish his seniority. Hallelujah. Mysteries. Everyone say mysteries. There are many well-meaning Christians, hear me, who are victims of the unlocking of mysteries. Someone comes and matches a charm. Brothers and sisters, this person is returning maybe from church with your Bible from choir practice huh? you didn't see anything on, on the ground that shows that there is a charm but you stepped on it the charm has been programmed he said anybody's leg that steps on you is the person who said and you step on it without light and all of a sudden you are minding your business and you see another law walking in your members what is going on suddenly your leg you can't tell again ha -ha. the last time i checked my leg was fine what is going on you get up the next day times two the size next day times three and they go to the hospital and they say Kai, there's nothing doctors now already know they are tired of the devil thank god for what god is doing in hospitals many doctors now when they look at your case they say look i'm advising you if you know a man of god that is anointed find him quickly 
Because where you are lying down here, three people came, same condition. Thank God for doctors that are spirit filled. Hallelujah. There are families like that. Brothers and sisters, I'm not the kind of person that sees demons in everything. There are principles. We're intelligent people. But I will deceive you if I tell you evil is not real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I would have, I would have jeopardized the integrity of my calling. This is why many of us go through all kinds of cycles of a lot of things. Brothers and sisters, hear me. When you find yourself in trouble, if you find yourself in a hole, you can't bring yourself out. It says, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. That was the light that came to them. And then he said, arise and shine for your light. Not because you can sit down there forever. But he says, when your light comes, then you will arise. Tonight, someone's, how many minutes do we have? I'll minister for a few more minutes and then we'll, I'll take time and we'll minister to the sick. Is that, is that alright? I know that there are people who are trusting God for healings. I'm not the kind of man of God that will say, now, after hearing this message, I hope that as you go back home, do something about it. No, no. Something must be done now. I'm not teaching you to start insulting people and just laugh and say this man is not powerful because we are all laboring to enter that rest in reality. Listen, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, hear me please, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ gives us access. Our operating these kingdom principles bring us, it is us taking advantage, hear me, when you walk in these principles, you are not trying to do something else outside of what Christ has done. It is your partnership with him. You're taking advantage of the access to make it real in your life. Are you getting my point now? Because that's where I understand that there can be confusion. A lot of us have believed that, okay, Jesus have done it. I believe it and I've said so. But I'm not seeing anything in my life. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, it says, If thou sh it shall come to pass in that day, thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day, that these blessings shall come upon you and shall overtake you. Listen, the Bible tells us again and again that we do not yet see all things under his feet. Please get this. Our walking the word of God is not trying to add to what Christ has done. Our walking the word of God is our response of obedience. Are you getting my point now? It is our proof of faith to make alive that truth. There are laws in the kingdom that were there before the fall of man. I hope you know. Job want to come have time but let me show you something interesting let's go to the book of Job hallelujah 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 Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Job thirty eight. Behold, I show you a mystery. This that I'm about to read happened way, hear me, it happened way before Genesis 1. Job 38, okay. Job, through whatever spiritual mystery I really do not know, but he invoked the presence of God. 
Then the Lord answered Job out of what? A whirlwind. You see that it was the same whirlwind with the chariots of fire that came and carried Elijah. And said, verse 2, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Who is this that is talking? Job, you are making a lot of noise. I've been listening to you from heaven. You've been saying so many things. You are ranting. Job, I want to speak to you now. Verse 3. Guard up your loins like a man, for I will demand of thee. I want to talk to you using my knowledge as God, and I want you to answer me if you think you have knowledge of that much mystery. Verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the word? That's question one. So God tells us the earth has foundation. Geography tells us it's revolving in space. God said, uh-uh. There is a spiritual mystery. A day, this earth is like a building. What kind of eyes will you see that will turn a God shape into a building? Declare if thou hast understanding. Verse 5. Who laid the measures? That means there was an architect. It was an intentional thing. The earth was measured. It has dimensions. Or who had stretched the line. Like the plumb line you use upon it. Verse 6. Whereupon are the foundations fastened? Like a tent. Or who laid the cornerstone? Verse 7. This God is telling Job. That were you there when the morning stars sang together the day the earth foundation was laid there was a thanksgiving and foundation laying ceremony way before your arrival this is what happened in the heavens the morning stars sang together and all the word i've said i've said it again and again sons of god is not a new testament concept it has been there since sons of god is not a name it's an office Who shut the sea with doors? Brothers and sisters, that means the seas you see, they have spiritual doors. So when we see flooding, we know that a law was activated that opened those doors in the spirit. This is what God is telling us. Hallelujah. There's no such thing as just flooding anyhow. There are people by acts of divination, they have inquired in the archives of spiritual things. When it break forth, as if it issued out of the womb. Verse 9. When I made the cloud a garment and thick darkness a swaddling blood for it. Verse 10. And break up for my decreed place and set bars and doors. God made a decree and said, Sis, make sure you remain here. And said, He that toe shall thou come, but no further. And here shall thy proud waves be stayed. Let's stop there. I just wanted to show you. When did this happen? And what? when this thing happened, Job kept quiet. Job said, wow. Wow. You see why the people worship God? Because heaven is a place of perpetual revelation. God surrounds himself with mysteries. So, the mystery you saw before you bowed down when you stand up is not what you will see again. It's like these lights. The way these lights change, that's how the mysteries around God, they are so many, they keep changing. And so in the book of Ezekiel, we see men saying holy. In Revelation, they are still saying holy. They've not stopped. They are saying holy is not that that's their work. They pay them salary for it. No. It is a response they are not even aware that that long a time had come and gone. Brothers and sisters, hear me. There are mysteries in this kingdom. Say it. There are mysteries. In many parts of this nation, every time they kill men, the people in those territories become richer. What do they know about blood and money? A man of God wrote a powerful book, Blood Money. Let me tell you the truth. Every money is blood money. Every. Whether blood of Jesus or blood of whatever. Every money is blood money. Are you learning something? 
I'm not just teaching you this so that you will have theological knowledge and say, wow, I have something. But it is to sponsor your hunger for spiritual things. So that when men look at you and say, ah, ah, Pastor Femi, you are already healing the sick. What are you looking for? You say, what am I looking for? Paul said that I may know him. When Paul, at the apex of his ministry, saw that there was so little he knew, he said that I may know him. That I may know him. In five minutes, I will show you something that the fasting tonight has done for you. Because it's a mystery. Fasting is a mystery in the spirit that has not been taught. Because of the effect it has. We have not been taught that it is part of our spiritual growth process. I want to see you. Isaiah 58. I want to hear your voice. I want to know. I want to know you more. Isaiah 58. I want to know you more. Silaba Kuradu Shilabariana. I want to know you. I want to know verse 6 verse 6 Isaiah 58 verse 6 is not this the fast that I have chosen that means not every fast carries weight in the spirit there are some fastings that are religiosities that have no power backing them and it's just dead religion. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it says there is a kind of fast that God has chosen. Is this not the kind of fast that I have chosen? It said to lose the what? To lose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens and to do what? To let the oppressed, the word let here is to permit them that they will go free and that you break what? To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. So it is in this kind of fast that you lose the bands of wickedness. In your fasting, you activate a law that strengthens your faith, kills unbelief. I truly believe that fasting primarily addresses one major issue, and that's unbelief. It opens you up your organs of interaction with the spirit all of a sudden all the possibilities in god are the possibilities in you there is a relationship between food your body and this realm that's why gluttony is a sin gluttony is not fornication so why why is it a sin lost for food the same way a man has lost for a woman Someone has lost, but his own oh, nice, not a woman, is for food. Even if he has eaten, he can hold the bread and lie down and sleep like that. That is gluttony. That's the kind of case that requires deliverance. Fast. Hallelujah. Because, see, excessive food does something to your spirit man. It's like a meter. There is a level to which your eating becomes healthy. It keeps your body. Afterwards, it's like the law of diminishing returns. It's like, it's like you are inverting your spirit. Are you seeing that now? Because you see, your, your spiritual growth is inversely proportional to your flesh. Two of them cannot grow at the same time. Huh? 
So, when one is growing, the other one must bow. And part of that is achieved in fasting. When you fast and you pray and you declare the word with understanding and spiritual intelligence, you edify yourself, you activate certain things. To lose the bands. That means wickedness has a rope. Hello? It has a rope. Tying down families. Many of us are, are victims of the bands of wickedness. Like the hands of Samson. A great warrior but tied down. And nothing could be done about it. He said to undo what? Heavy burdens. A luggage that you inherited. You, they gave birth to you in the middle of a spiritual discussion that has nothing to do with you. And like Simon of Cyrene, you just received a luggage on your head you cannot explain. It says, to let the oppressed go free. Listen, there are, there are different kinds of captivity. But there are certain people, the Bible calls them lawful captives. Captives who are in captivity legally. It says, even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I will contend with them that contend with you. I don't know if you need peace in your life. But it's not just going to come by crossing your legs. You must engage spiritual keys. It says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatsoever you bind, whatsoever you cast. Keys of access. Verse 8. Let's read together. Then shall what? So fasting is a mystery that accelerates revelation. He said, then shall your light break forth. There is something God has been trying to reveal to you. There is a spiritual understanding that steps up your stand in the spirit. But it's been limited. The weight of food and the weight of, of laziness. This inertia that comes with this body. And when you fast, you ease yourself. The Bible says your light breaks forth as the morning. And your health shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you and then the glory of the Lord shall be your what? reward it shall be your reward you will see greater glory upon your life greater glory physically in ministry, in life you begin, that's, see, that's why some people go from strength to strength when you think they have exhausted everything, they come up with a new dimension. Let me show you one last mystery. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the time now? Isaiah 40. Let's just look at that finally. We hunger and thirst for you. In a dry and weary land All we want Is you Verse 28, please let's hurry up Isaiah 40 from verse 28 I want to teach you a very powerful principle For those of you who have not listened to the teaching Secrets of sustained glory, please get it There's nothing as painful As looking at a man And say he once was powerful he once was anointed. This guy used to have a flourishing ministry. God was alive in his midst. No, it should not be. May you never have the testimony of Ichabod in your life. That the glory has departed. No. Has thou not known? When God begins to probe a man like this. Then he wants to reveal something he has not known. Has thou not heard? That the everlasting God. The Lord. The creator of the ends of the earth. He does what? Number one. He does not have this characteristic in himself. That means he does not have the ability to faint. 
there is a mystery encapsulated in his person that cannot permit this deficiency. He says, neither is he weary. There's nothing called tiredness. Because it is hope deferred that makes the heart weary. His word is yea and amen. There is no postponing, so he does not know weariness. He says, and there is no searching of his understanding. So he gives us certain things. Number one, mankind can faint. The word faint is to be fatigued, to be tired. We can be weary when what you hope for does not come. When the marriage does not come as when you want it. Are you hearing me? When the admission or the graduation, it is natural. Hear me. It is not a spiritual deficiency as it were. It's part of the predicament that comes with wearing this body. But there is a technology in the spirit and this is what I want to teach you. It says he giveth what? That means there is a supply in the spirit that can bring power to you when you faint. And to those who have no might, he can increase like a meter. He can increase strength. Hallelujah. Next verse. Even what? I hope you know the Bible says the glory of the young people is their strength. So when the strong ones grow weary, it's a sign that we are limited. The youth shall faint. That means in your Christian experience, listen to me, no matter how anointed you are, no matter how blessed you are, a time can come in your life on the strength of the physical happenings in your life. This possibility can be true of you, that you can faint. Hallelujah. You trusted God for a great CGPA. You saw five points in your dream. When you went to check it, you saw 1.7. He said, Lord, which, what is this again? I've already packaged my thanksgiving offering. I thought it was five points. What is, who is confusing me here? And then, you may be a man of God, but at this time, it will touch you. Are you hearing me? When you hear that your loved one that you have been praying for finally died, the Bible says, even the youth shall faint. And be wary, and young men shall utterly fall. That's why you hear certain people just sit down and you hear them talk and you're like, sister, are you not born again? Say, see, if God doesn't help me, well, I, whoever comes, I don't care who, I will shall marry and we'll flog it out when we get married. It's not like the person is not a Christian. This is what is happening. Are you getting my point? Don't criticize people when you see them fainting and Jesus wept. He wept because he took this body and it grieved him. Jesus was hungry and he was staggering and when he came to a fig tree, he wanted to plug it and there was no food and he was angry. He cursed the fig tree because when you wear this body, you can faint. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Physical fatigue, emotional fatigue when your hope is postponed. You are trusting God for the job and someone said, um, you will hear from me. Maybe in two weeks time. And you've waited for nine years. No job. Everybody keeps seeing you and say, ah, you should be a, a director now, Abby. And you're even embarrassed. Yes, I'm a director by faith. Please don't, don't embarrass me here. Must you laugh at me? That's the kind of testimony that some of us have. But let me tell you something. This is the technology. Hiya. When you get to this state in the spirit, when it looks like you are about to go down, it says, but they, that means not everybody is interested, but they that wait upon the Lord. I fed my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. I fed my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. 
If you're a man of God here, let me teach you a secret. Otherwise, one day you will sit before your congregation and start crying. I don't know how many messages I preach in a week. I travel all the time. I'm on, I'm on the road. And there are all kinds of expectations. Every territory that invites me, they are happy. They listen to the messages. They go and invite people. And there is, you see, the anointing is like, the anointing is, is as if you have holes in your body. Are you getting me? You become a conductor of the anointing and it tells on your body. That's why when you leave your body and you come back, you feel weak. Right? So, virtue, that concept of virtue going out is real. Many people have not felt it because they are not anointed. They feel the same way from the beginning of the service. They didn't bless anybody, nothing left. But when they touched Jesus, he felt something. He said, who touched me? Ah, it created an effect. Because there are times you are standing on stage and you will receive the pain of somebody. For that small moment, you will feel that pain and your body will respond. Where is this one coming from? The Holy Ghost said, no, no, no. This is a word of knowledge. But your body is still going to suffer that predicament. So by the time the service is done, a lot has left you. You've preached all of the messages. And then another message is coming and the people say, man of God, we saw in a vision you were doing great things and you are saying, oh God. One day, you will just fall down and just die. Because you will preach every message. You will now check and say, now which one? Faith, they had it last year. Uh, <laughs> see, those who are pastors are laughing because they know what happens every Saturday. Saturdays are the most stressful days for men of God. And uh, uh, they are meeting this because they are there sweating. They are wondering. You go to someone.com, nothing. The heavens are closed. You go to all kinds of things. You try to listen to a man of God's message. You remember that, ah, you shared that thing already and you are, you are now wondering and say, oh Lord. Don't let that become part of your life. There is a technology. They that wait. It's a system. It's a mystery. It is a day, day that shout and do stupid things around the presence of God. They that, what do you understand? A waiter, huh? when you go to a very correct restaurant, what a waiter does is that he just stands waiting for your order. Right? They that come into his presence and say, Lord, if you don't help me, there is no help. And phone calls are ringing, man of God. We are calling to remind you that God is going to use you. You keep those things and say, Lord, this is why I'm here. I'm here because of these phone calls. There's so much demand upon me. If you don't increase my capacity and help me. You know that song? Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up. The first thing that happens to those who wait upon the Lord is that they shall renew. It's like the charging of a battery. All of a sudden in his presence, God begins to, he fires one revelation that becomes your three-month sermon. One revelation. Hi! I'm, I, it is my testimony. In his presence, all of a sudden, you think every message, you've exhausted everything. And then God gives you an encounter. And you start writing. And you are, sometimes I, I wish I can just organize koinonia every day to just unlock that which is in my spirit. So your strength. Let's try that our song again. We will run and not be weary. I don't know all the stanzas. Da, 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 da. Whatever it is. And his joy will be your strength. I will come into his presence. Many of you didn't go to Bible school. We will wait upon the Lord in His presence, His fullness of joy, and our strength. 
shall be restored as we wait. Some of you, when they were teaching that song in Sunday school, you were running and scratching people's car and, and stealing money and buying ice cream. When your colleagues were receiving, you were there. They dropped you. Immediately they leave. You now run away. <laughs> Hallelujah. So number one, they shall renew their strength. Physical strength. Spiritual strength. When you see a man five years in ministry, looking as if he has been in ministry for 50 years. Uh, well, you see, where everything is, I just write whether he's there, I can't even remember. And it's, What? laziness, inertia. It says they shall renew their strength. Number two, they shall mount up. Mm. Many of us, I don't want to go into the story of the eagle, but you know that there are times that the eagle needs to defeather itself, shed off the old for the new because you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. You cannot tie a new material with an old one. Their strength is not the same. Hallelujah. And so what happens is that in that place of retreat is the shedding off of that level. There is something that leaves you. The weaknesses. God wants to increase the ministry. He needs to increase your faith. He needs to increase your trust. He needs to increase integrity. Many things happen in that secret place. And then you will mount up. All of a sudden, you come up on stage. And whoa, there is a brand new you. When someone is listening to the message and is busy hitting his head, then he hears another dimension. This is an unending mystery. They shall run. Like Elijah, Elijah told Ahab, saddle your ass and run. Don't worry about me. There is a technology in the spirit that accelerates my life. Don't worry. You see, because when you are staying back in the secret place, it looks like you're a fool. Sometimes you will need to refuse a, a ministration that can honor you greatly. Is it not? You are about to go for a ministration where you know that the honorarium will make you happy. And God says, stay back. There's no true happiness outside of my presence. Stay back and say, Lord, the last time somebody smiled and wanted to give me a car, God said, remain there. But when you remain there, you will run. See, I'm teaching you a powerful secret. That's why when you look, you'll be wondering, is there anything to ENIZ? Is there anything to Koinonia? Hold on. When we wait, we will run. Is it not a mystery in the spirit? When you want to run, wait. He said, when you wait, then truly you will run. Hurry, hurry in life. I want to hurry to do ministry. I want to hurry to be man of God. The Bible says, wait. That's how you run. When you wait, then you will run. Jesus Christ was waiting and praying and interacting with the Father. They took the boat and they started going. Six hours they were ahead of him but they were not making any progress. That's how many people are doing ministry. They are doing ministry as if they call themselves. No proof, no sign, no witness. God doesn't confirm anything. They struggle to confirm everything. Ah no, come on. There must be a supernatural dimension to your life. There must be a dimension men cannot explain. That's the proof that you are not alone. If you can explain everything about your ministry, you are doing it alone there must be a supernatural dimension. They shall run and not be. So all of a sudden, Jesus Christ stands up and starts walking on the water. This is Jesus walking on the water. Strength came upon him. And the disciples, he was about passing them. He said, Master, eh? Master, you can't pass us like this. You are seeing what we are going through. Jesus looked at them. They thought he was a ghost. And Peter said, I like this, your technology. So there is something like this and you left us struggling with the boat when we can walk. Brothers and sisters, drop moving in the boat and wait so that you can receive the feet to run. 
Are you getting me? Many of us are so slow in our life. We are trying to hurry up and we are living the presence of God. And we believe that by living the presence of God, you will hurry up in life. You are joking. That's why a man can start a ministry. After 12 years, the man is alone as if God didn't send him. And they say, anybody you see moving like that, forget it. Uh, something must have been done. Is that true? Learn this. If you don't learn anything, if you want to run in the spirit, wait. I want to hurry up and marry. Say, let's walk around. Is it not when they see us? Wait. Ah, you, you think we you think we don't know what you people discuss? Look, let me tell you, it's good to let people see you, huh? But where was Ruth when God was fixing her destiny? Naomi was busy talking to her, she was waiting. When you find yourself running without a track record of waiting. One gentleman sent me a text and he said, man of God, I feel the call. How do I launch out? I replied to him, I said, forget about launching out. Settle down. You see, that's the language. Launch out. In other words, how do I take this thing? The fire that is burning my spirit, nobody knows. The fire of God, if not understood, you can misinterpret that fire to mean that it's a sign to run, whereas it's a sign to refine you. And not be weary. He said, and they shall walk. And the Bible tells us in Isaiah 43. That when you are walking, it means there is fire around you. When you walk through the fire. So when you are walking through what is killing others. You are standing tall. And people are saying, what technologies? Uh -uh. I waited until the fourth man arrived. So I am not alone. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Come live in me all my life. Take over. Come breathe in me and I will points very quickly two prayer points hallelujah um, there's a family that that got to contact me I don't know if they are here that they, is it a sick person or a, a mad person or someone like that are they around this protocol find out if they're around then we'll just minister fast if they're not around hallelujah praise the Lord Two prayer points. Prayer point number one. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer. It says, I will show you. I will not just tell you. I will show you. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 says, I will stand upon my watch. I will set myself upon the tower to see what the Lord will say. You're going to say, Oh God. Let the revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom. I'm tired of ignorance. I'm tired of living my life anyhow. Open up the scrolls of the spirit and grant me access to revelation. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside, we are praying now. Shake it, take it, we are praying now. Leke te porakata baladabas. Mande ke prans ke la boko shoto lo ba 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 ba. Shekata balako shoto baladabas. It has been given unto you. Jesus Christ paid the price already. It has been given unto you to know the mysteries, the spiritual codes. That govern dominion. Pray for the sake of your family, for the sake of many.
that you have been anointed to save there are destinies tied to your life don't let them die pray there is a mystery that you will know that will stop these spells these yokes of darkness from your life open our eyes oh God open our eyes pray grant me light I hate fear I cause fear reveal something to me that takes fear out of my life reveal something to me that takes insecurity out of my life reveal something to me that stops competition in my life let me stand on a solid rock koinonia pray open our eyes to the mysteries of the kingdom open our eyes to the operations of spiritual laws Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number two. You are going to pray, whether you fasted or not. You are all in the corporate atmosphere. You are going to pray and say, Lord, every band of wickedness over my life, please hear me, over my family, over my loved ones, I stand tonight as an ambassador and I declare that enough is enough. Those bands be broken now. Lift your voice and pray. Come on, lose those bonds over my family. I declare I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. I confront witchcraft, the system of evil, the system of death. I challenge you as an ambassador. Thus far as you come, no further shall you go. Pray, pray. Your prayer will prevail. Your prayer will prevail. We confront delay. We confront delay. We confront poverty. We confront late marriage. We confront barrenness. We confront terminal disease. Confront witchcraft, spells, yokes, enchantments, divinations that are carried out in heavenly places. Banda katabosa, reketete bosh, stargazing, necromancy. We challenge those powers. We challenge them. We come as ambassadors, sons of light. Sons of grace, sons of power. Shake it up, Tatawala. Go, 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 Oh, we challenge them. We challenge them. We challenge covens. We challenge spells. We will not be silent. The King of Glory steps into our 
your family the king of glory steps into your academic enough is enough pray like a priest pray like a priest I tear down the curtains of wickedness I tear down the bands of evil challenge the spirit of death challenge failure challenge delay Pray. Something is happening in the spirit. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your job. We tear down spiritual walls, limitations. Be broken. Yokes. Be broken. The spirit of the Lord God is upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just give me five minutes and God is going to do something mighty in this place. The devil must let you go. Shake it Oh, he must let you go. Victory is imminent. Man must know that your God is alive. a few minutes and we're done something must break open in your life tonight hallelujah listen 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 the bible says resist the devil and he will flee hallelujah he must flee must flee i tell you our families must testify that Jesus is alive. And we are tearing down limitations. Lift your hands. There are families that have been limited in many ways. We are going to shout that name Jesus wants. I saw this many times as I pray today. As you shout that name, the sword from heaven will descend upon certain people. And there will be a tearing apart. I tell you, a tearing apart. I already sense the anointing of the Spirit. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, every family represented here, inside and outside, that have been facing any kind of limitation, I judge that power and I declare that as they shout this name, 
let it rattle the foundations of witchcraft and sorcery in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you ready now? Man, take up a rataba. One, two, my God, three. Go protoskeba. Sekete, I cost those altars. I cost those altars. I cost those altars. I cost those altars. Inside, outside, I cost them. I cost them. I set them on fire. Make go protos. Make it take up. I come with an apostolic law in the name of Jesus. I invoke the powers of heaven to fight this spirit. I invoke the powers of heaven. And take a lavatech. Make it take up. I release you. I release you. I release you. I release you. I release your family. I release your family now. I release your family from witchcraft. I release you from delay. I release you from limitation. I release you. Lift your hands again. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I see at least 12 families. Hear me. The Lord is bringing restoration. Hear me. Restoration. As I begin to speak, God will locate those families. Exact families. Right now, Lord, let your power. Man to kapa teketa. Rekete kabashka. Those families for restoration. In the name of Jesus. Let the angel of restoration move inside and outside. Let the angel of restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Sevenfold. 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 I decree it. I declare it. Sevenfold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to break academic bondage. Lift your hands. This suffering is over. Lift your hands. Hear me. You're going to shout that name Jesus again. When you shout it, there are many of us. I'm seeing chains. This is how it will leave you. In a shocking way. Are you ready now? Father. Everyone here under any spell and bondage of academics in the mighty name of Jesus, we bring that situation under judgment. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. I judge that power. I judge that power. I judge that power. Man, they get the back at the front of the top of the city. Shakratik and the bush. Hallelujah. We'll soon be rounding up. I see a lot of packages that are supposed to have come upon many people. Listen to me. But I see them hanging in the spirit so many for many of us you have seen it in visions you know it has been released man tata as i speak now as i speak as i speak now as i speak now there is a release is is coming on people right now right now right now i open the heavens let it come let it come let it come let it come now No matter how long it has stayed in the spirit, I command it. I command it. I command it. I command it. No matter how long, if I be a servant of God, I invoke it 
Let it come now. Let it come now. Let it come now. If I be an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, I invoke it. Let it come now. Let it come now. Surely there is an end. Surely there is an end. That situation can change. Surely there is an end. Those of you outside, make sure you are connecting in the spirit. There is no distance in the spirit. You may be so far, but God can locate you and change your life. Lift your hands. Let me speak over your life. Please, I want you to believe it. Every area of your life that looks like a barren wilderness in the name that is above all names, I pray right now let there be fruitfulness in your life. 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 Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Hallelujah. Anyone holding anything that belongs to you, in the name that is above all names i don't care where it is i don't care where they are i release it to your hands now i release it to your hands now i release it to your hands now Anyone who has been victimized here, I don't care what kind of victimization, whether academically, whether in your job, in the name that is above all names, I invoke the justice of God and let it settle this issue. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, any family member unduly sacked, we restore them back in the name of Jesus. Any family member under any case where they are innocent, we vindicate them tonight. We vindicate them tonight. I declare the anointing that makes for favor, the anointing that stops struggle in the life of a man, in the name of Jesus, may that anointing be activated in your life now. Let it be activated in your life now. I command struggle to end in your life now. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. That anointing that distinguishes you in the name that is above all names, you will not need to talk about yourself. You will not need to talk about your ministry. You will not need to talk about anything. I invoke an anointing that puts you in a seat of honor. Receive it now. It will come on many people right now. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. It's called honor. It's called honor. I release it upon your life. Anyone sick right now in any part of your body you're sick in any part of your body or you're standing in for a loved one it is the final thing we'll do right now 
in the name that is above all names I declare that in this presence of God I release the healing power of Jesus right now sick bodies be healed now I command SSAS change now change now change now I command HIV you must die now you must die now every mad person here if there's anyone who is mad or any family member let your sanity be restored now anyone on a sick bed or a dead bed we command life and we command them to stand up from that sick body that sick bed in the name of Jesus Christ anyone being attacked and molested in your dreams assaulted by any spirit of darkness in the name of Jesus let a wall of fire surround you in the name of Jesus Christ any infirmity that is represented in this place and for those following us online in the name that is above all names we declare be healed right now be healed right now the Bible lets us know very quickly that according to Hebrews chapter 9 Paul was speaking when you read from verse 1 and 4 1 to 4 Paul gives us um, a picture he gives us a very graphic representation of all that was represented in the ark and I want us to look at it very briefly ready Hebrews chapter 9 that's all right I'll turn back and read then verily he said the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary we're reading to verse 4 for there was a tabernacle made the first wherein was the candlestick the table and the shoe bread which is called the sanctuary after and after the second veil the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all read with me verse 4 please if you can see it ready one to read which had the golden censer uh-huh and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold wherein was the golden pot that had manna and the aaron's rod that bordered and the tables so we know that there were three things from Exodus and from Hebrews that the ark it was so designed to be a a um, it was like a chest a triangle a, a, a rectangular chest are we together that was overlaid when you read from chapter 25 from verse 10 to 22 of exodus it gives you all the details of the construction of the ark but then it says it was designed in a way and a manner that it was overlaid with what we call the messy seat and the lord made a very interesting statement he says above the messy seat below the cherubims there i will meet with you and i will relate with you intimately there was a location if you can prepare that ark he says i will meet with you very important so we know that the construction of the ark and the content of the ark all together where number one listen pay attention the contents of the ark now we're dealing with it one it had the wood the construction of the wood and do you know when you read exodus chapter 25 beginning from verse 10 god kept telling man even though my presence will come you do it you do this one you do this one so the very construction of the ark of covenant required the participation of man this is the first thing we have to understand about the construction and the content it was not god god gave the commands but man was instructed he was given the dimensions he was told what to do 
but he had to do it. That means if you want to experience the glory of God, there is a role that you have to play. It is not all up to God and it is not all up to you. There is a participatory role that man will always play as far as hosting the grace, the power, the wisdom, the presence of God is concerned. The wood was constructed by man. It took the meticulousness, the discipline, the diligence of going to look for the exact wood and the specification. God came to rest upon it, but it was man who designed it. This is the first information I want you to understand. So the construction, the wooden construction represents the participation of man. Then, number two, the Bible talks about the covenants or the commandments. The table, remember, the, the ten commandments that Moses received from the Lord. And then in anger, he threw it and then he was made to construct the stones again. And God again wrote on those tablets. And he says, take those two tablets, the commandments. Number three, we see the pot or the omer that was full of manna that fell from heaven. In Exodus chapter 16, Exodus chapter 16, when you read from verse 31 to 35, Exodus chapter 16, 31 to 35, they murmured against God and against Moses, how that they were hungry, and God sent manna, manna from heaven that the Bible tells us was the bread of angels. And every day they were asked to pick, and then on the Sabbath, they were asked to pick and by the next day, it did not decay. And he was given an instruction. He says, take some of this and put in the pot. Let it be as a testament, as a memorial of that supply and that provision and that power of God. Are we learning? Number three, we see the rod of Aaron that burdened. When you read number 17, the whole text is in number 17 from verse 1 to 10 but particularly verse 9 and 10 numbers chapter 17 this was a leadership problem by the way man of god if you are having a very serious leadership problem in your church or in your organization read number 17 because God himself brought an end to every kind of controversy around leadership. He said, take the rods of everybody from every tribe, the twelve tribes. He said, place it before the tabernacle, the ark. He says, whichever will board, also take the one of Aaron. So that they will know that my ordination to his priesthood was not human. And the Bible says, by the next day. So they, they will not blame Moses again. There are times you make decisions as a leader and people think it's favoritism. People think you are just being sentimental. There are times you need to trust God to do something that everybody will know. This one is the hand of God. And an end came to all the quarreling and the arguments, the Bible says. So, God instructed immediately. He said, the rod of Aaron that bought it, put it also at the ark. Let it be a memorial. So we see that the Ark of Covenant basically contained three things inside. The table of testaments or commandments. Number two, the rod of Aaron that bordered. Are we together? And then number three, the pot that was full of manna. And then overlaying the Ark was what we call the mercy seat. Why am I taking out time to break these elements of the ark? Because if it is the glory of God you want to see rest, if you want to become a mobile ark, every one of these things that was in the ark must be in you too. If you want to replicate the ark in your life, then you have to follow the pattern of the construction also. If anything is found wanting, as far as the elements are concerned, you may not be able to replicate the ark that hosts the presence of God. Are we blessed? So let's look at the significance of these elements and then we pray. Number one, the first lesson we have to learn from the ark is that it was constructed by man. The vessel that carried the ark 
was a representation of man. Here's what the Bible says. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal. It says, The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And then the next verse says, But in a great house, he lists four kinds of vessels and their implication. He says there are vessels of wood, there are vessels of clay, there are vessels of silver, there are vessels of gold. He says some vessels are unto dishonor and there are vessels that are unto dishonor. If you want to become that vessel, here is the condition. If a man will purge himself. He says that man will be a vessel unto honor, meat or fit for the master's use. So the first thing we have to deal with is man's participation. The discipline and the diligence of allowing your life to become that worthy habitation that can host the fullness of the presence and the power of God. If you're with me, say Amen. The ark was made of choice wood, expensive, valuable material. It was not just made of careless wood. It was, it was meticulously built by the intelligence and the artistry of man. Number two, for the sake of time. What is the significance of the covenants? The commandments. They represent laws and they represent instructions. Can I tell you this? If you want to host the presence of God, Within your life must be an accommodation for the principles of the kingdom and instructions. The commandments represent instructions. And these instructions, notice that principally these instructions come from and through men. They come from God, but they come through men. When God delivered the Ten Commandments, He was the one who wrote it. But the person who interpreted and explained it was Moses the man. Any man who is not given to the reception of divine instructions can never truly host the glory of God. Are we learning something now? We are constructing the ark in our own lives now. That the first element that is needed is you. The vessel must be sufficient. Not in yourself necessarily, but that purging by the blood, by the word, to become a vessel of honor and then instructions. We thrive and we excel and we command victory in this kingdom on the strength of the laws and the instructions that we receive. This is why Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 says, And I will give you shepherds, pastors, after my heart, it says, that they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Proverbs continue to, ch to challenge us and said that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says, but fools despise instruction. Are we together? You want to host superior dimensions of the glory of God, especially in this end time. If you want the ark to be experientially constructed in and through your life, then you must be prepared to walk with, in keeping with the laws. I'm not just talking of Old or New Testament. I'm talking of laws, the ordinances of the kingdom. And then the instructions of the Lord. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. And if you do obey that instruction, it says you will find rest for your soul. Are we learning? The next element that must be captured in our life is the mystery of the rod of Aaron. The rod of Aaron validated the priesthood ministry of Aaron. So the rod there is a representation of priesthood. You want your life to be an expression of the ark, you must embrace the mystery of priesthood. And the primary assignment of priesthood is to burn that instance the ministry of prayer. Your life will never truly be able to be a, a representation of the glory and the grace of God 
if priesthood is absent in your life. Jesus came into the temple when he found people selling and buying and selling in the temple. The zeal of the Lord ate him up and the Bible says he took whip when he beat them up. This is what he said, my house. If it is truly my house, it shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. But you have turned it into a den of robbers. Many of you have heard me teach. Your house is either one of two things at any given time. A house of prayer or a den of robbers. A den of robbers means a place where thieves dwell. And Satan is the principal thief that can come. So if your life is not a house of prayer as that temple, the next thing it becomes is a den of robbers. Where the thief can come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There's no being neutral. At any given time, this temple, your house, is either a house of prayer or a den of robbers. The robbers will come as mysterious demonic afflictions. The robbers will come as all kinds of oppressions. But when it becomes a house of prayer, the fire that is upon that altar will not allow any spirit that is not of the Christ to dwell there. Because the Bible says, Jesus himself teaching said, when a spirit is casted out of a man, Jesus is teaching us now, he says when that spirit comes out of a man, it goes around through desert regions, looking for a place, not finding any place, it will say, I will return back. There is something about the desert that makes the spirit not comfortable. Nobody is casting the spirit from the desert. It will cast itself back and prefer staying in you. Do you know why? Because the desert is extremely hot. So when your life simulates the condition of the desert, that spirit will also not be able to stay within you. Was it not the fire from the fire that made the viper come out? When there is no fire, the viper can remain there. priesthood. Hear me, believers. We must get to a point where genuine prayer becomes a lifestyle, not something we do just to obtain things. The primary assignment of prayer is for your transformation. More than receiving requests. The Bible says, and as he prayed, speaking about Jesus, he says his garment his face became as white and his garment became as white and his countenance changed so prayer is principally a tool for transformation you evolve into superior versions of yourself when you pray you do not find your former self again after prayer the self that you now see is the powerful one is the great one is the anointed one bring a weak believer with no bearing in his life bring someone who does not know his left and his right submit him to the ministry of priesthood and watch an evolution happen a timid person will become a champion in the spirit if you want to host the glory of god especially in these end times let me tell you sincerely do not ignore the rod of aaron it's not just a rod it's a rod of priesthood you're not just going to stand and tell demons, go away. You will not just stand over cities and say, I open the tulip gate. No, sir. It will be at the instance of genuine priesthood. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. You have an assignment to register your name in the realm of the spirit. So that demons will not just say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Add your name, Joshua Selman, I know, because they are witnesses to your priesthood. We are discussing the ark. Remember the wood of Achaia, the Castia wood. Remember the commandments, laws, and instruction. Remember the rod of Aaron, priesthood. Now the next is the pot or the omer that carried manna. Pilaski da branda katoshke debriya. 
The manna there talks about the ministry of the word. Jesus himself was speaking about this in Matthew 4. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Every word. The manna that does not decay. The manna that could not go through corruption. And the only seed we know that is incorruptible is that which is by the word of God. Listen to me. The word of God defines the jurisdiction of his commitment to the believer. God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the scope that the word of God allows him. He has chosen to exalt his word even above his name. This is the difference between the faith life and superstition. God is bound only by his word. That means if you want to get God committed to your life, it must be the, the legal basis upon which you will place your demands must be scripture. When Satan came to him, he didn't say, I think. He didn't say, I wish. He said, it is written. What gives us victory in this kingdom is what is written, not what we want. Whatever you want, you must find out whether it is written or not. If what you want is not written, it cannot happen. What you want only happens when it is written. Please listen to me. If you want to host the glory of God upon your life, your church, your business, it must be a ministry that has respect and value for scripture. It was written so that it cannot be changed. It is written. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Jesus himself was teaching. And he said, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. We reign in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we sustain. A mystery is a hidden body of truth that is privy to a group of people. We rise in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know. There are mysteries that control speed. There are mysteries that control restoration. There are mysteries that control lifting. There are mysteries that control being anointed. There are mysteries that control exemption. There are mysteries that control prosperity. There are mysteries that control influence. Your assignment is to walk in partnership with the Spirit of Grace and find for everyone that seeks it, find it. The seed for finding is to seek. If you do not seek, you cannot have the harvest of finding. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 says, Through desire a man, having separated himself, that he seeketh and he intermeddleth with all wisdom. Please let us obtain grace from God to go back to scripture and settle down. Otherwise our life will look superstitious yet will keep failing. I believe the word of God. Why do I know the sick will be healed? Because it is written. Why do I know God will commit himself to your lifting tonight? Because it is written. Not because I am a man of God. Being a man of God is a secondary reason. The primary reason why all things happen is because it is written. John chapter 1 and verse 3. All things were made by him. And without him, without him means outside of his influence, was not anything made that was made. That means when you neglect the word of God, the possibility of creation and manifestation has left you. It has to be at the instance of the word. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 and 3 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past, through the prophet had in these last days spoken to us through his son which is the word whom he had appointed to be heir over all things and then when you read verse 3 he says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding how many things upholding my tomorrow upholding my tomorrow Upholding my tomorrow through the word of his power. 
up, upholding my future, my confidence is beyond the advantage or the disadvantage in a territory. Your confidence must be based on it is written. It is written. Why will you succeed? I have a great father. You are joking. Woe unto him that puts his strength in a man. Even the word himself used it is written to defend himself. The word of God didn't say my opinion. The word submitted to it is written. Can I tell you this? You must know how to defend your victory. It is written. Why should I leave this family? It is not we are members of a particular church that is wonderful there is a place for prophetic covering but i tell you the real reason why we excel in this kingdom is because it is remember the manner it was kept here as a memorial that there is no victory for you if it is not written anything that is not written cannot happen the anointing of the spirit does not work at random the anointing of the spirit follows what is written so if you are making claims in prayer there is a verification system in the realm of the spirit before the anointing begins to move on that wise the anointing does not just come because you want it to come the anointing verifies whether that desire is consistent with what is written preachers let's stop preaching what we want and preach what is because what we want will not come to pass until it is written. Please sit down. The Lord is turning you into an ark. Now you know what makes the ark more than the object. The participatory role that you have to play. Sitting down and waiting for God to do everything is a joke. It took man to build the ark. It will take you to make that place conducive for him. You want to become an ark, you must submit yourself to laws and instructions. And then you must submit yourself to the ministry of priesthood. You must learn to pray until you evolve into a vessel of honor. You can pray yourself from wood and become clay. Pray yourself from clay and become silver. Pray yourself from silver until you become gold. Hear me? When we pray, we truly evolve. Yes, sir. The version of you your future is looking for has not yet become. So your future is looking for a version of you that you have not become. Ah. The dream you saw about your greatness, that dream was designed to happen to another version of you, not this version. And your destiny keeps waiting. So it looks like you are not moving forward. And God is saying, no, I want to bless you. But there is a version of you that must carry that anointing. The anointing you are looking for for nations cannot come on this fashion. I'm seeing the spirit of prayer just coming on 11 people. This is what I'm seeing. Please just help them. 11 people. Now you understand that prayer is for your growth, for your evolution. Hear me. Hear me. You can pray an old realm out of your life into a new season. You can use prayer to close seasons and open new ones. Can I be honest with you? 
if we truly want to become this ark, we must obtain grace from God to move past just the realm of meeting needs to the realm where you stand with God and you can grow to a point of stature where God can trust you with the grace for nations, not just things. We're not talking about having one or two things that God can carry the destiny of a territory and say, take. If they are saved, it's your fault. If they are not saved, it's your fault. Look at the rewards of those who were faithful with the talents that were given to them. Authority over nations. Believers, let's return to the genuine ministry of priesthood. More than just give me things. I'm not saying those things are wrong. You can listen to my message, teach us to pray. I taught there about the mysteries, the dimensions of prayer. There is a dimension of prayer that is for supplication and petitions. But primarily, prayer is a tool for fellowship. And in that fellowship, there is evolution. You know you have met him because you changed. The protocol of encounter is that when you meet him, you are changed. And we all, with unveiled face, it says, beholding the glory... It's not the glory that changes. It's you that changes. Hear me? When the animals looked at what Jacob put, they were the ones who were changed into what they were seeing. And then, the manna, which is the word of God. Ignorance is dangerous in this end time. You must know what is written. Please sit down. The Bible basically contains three things. Am I wasting your time? Every time you open up scripture, the Bible contains three things that you must never forget. Number one, the Bible contains promises. The promises of God represent the scope of His commitment to you. There are promises that He has made. Excellent things He has spoken about His Zion. You must know the promises of God as revealed from scripture. What has God said he would do? Because when you can find what God said he will do, I assure you he will do it. Genesis 21 and verse 1. Please give it to us. Verse 1 and 2. Genesis 21. Read with me please. 1 to read. As he has aha uh -huh. And the Lord did unto Sarah when he speaks, he does. Except he has not said it. So you must find his promises. Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in her old age at the set time which the Lord had spoken. Promises. That's the first thing we search for in Scripture. Every time you open your Bible, your eyes must look for promises. Lord, what have you said concerning my life? What have you said concerning my destiny? It is only what he has said that comes to pass. Integrity is the ability to say and do. If God has not said, why should he do? So when you find what he has said, then because he's a God of integrity, the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. That means men lie. Men don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. Hallelujah. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. You can trust what he said. Now listen carefully. The second thing that is contained in scripture are principles. Principles represent the modus operandi of the kingdom. How the kingdom operates. When you study scripture, you find therein principles. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. It says to stand and to ask. Look at that path, that old path. Stand in the way and ask for the old path. It says, wherein is the good way? And when you have found it, walk in it. Jesus the Word also called himself the way. 
there is a revelation of Jesus called Jesus the way. How things are done in the kingdom. There is a way God leads people. There is a way God restores. There is a way God anoints. There is a way God increases. There is a way God de defends people. You have to understand the ways of God. Before he showed Moses his glory, the first thing he showed Moses were his ways. So, promises, principles. The third thing we find in scripture are prophecies. Revelations about the future. To be able to give you hope and to give you comfort. We find in scripture prophecies. So that we know that we are overcomers. Because of the prophecies that we have seen. Every time you open your Bible, you are searching for these three things. Promises, principles, prophecies. If your life is built upon the integrity of it is written, the dust will come and go. Every other thing will come and go. But because this house is built on a rock, it will stand and it will remain. The same thing that happened to the house on the sand happened to the house on the rock. It was not the superstructure. It was the foundation. Jesus said, this is how I will build my church. I will build my church with a formula. And if this formula is, is honored, the gates of hell will not prevail against her. Build your life on scripture. Build your life on it is written. And you have nothing to fear. The uncertainties that plague our world, the uncertainties that plague ministries, plague regions, are enough to make us fear. But the word of God can give us confidence because we know that it is written. Prophecy already told us the end of it. We know who has won. Ah. There are times that you are watching a movie and someone who has watched it before is sitting with you. He cannot have your anxiety. They kill the actor and you are, frustrated. you are frustrated. I've wasted one hour. I thought this man would win and the person says, you just keep watching. And you are wondering, what, where is your confidence coming from? The confidence is coming from the fact that he's watched it before. He watched it right to the point that he saw the end. And I can tell you, this right here already told me the end of my life. Yeah. He will not suffer my food to be. I carry your presence. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. I have found the end of my destiny here. That I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say at the Lord, that they are thoughts of peace and not of evil. To bring you a future and... There is a difference between having a future and having an end. You can have a future but maybe not have an end. Your today was a future to last week. Future is relative. End is fixed. I am secured in both. I have a future and I have an end. The final element, and then we begin to pray. Is the mercy seat that overlays it. There is something called the mercy seat. Exodus chapter 25. When you read 17 to 22. Just write it for reference. The mercy seat. Truly means the mercy of God. It's as simple, as clear, as honest as that. What is the mercy of God? The mercy of God is a factor... That is, is an invention from his intelligence 
to be able to deal with man in spite of the vacillations of man. The mercy of God was an invention that was custom made for man. God built the idea of mercy so that in spite of the frailties of man, there is still a guarantee that he can end. This is the reason why mercy is not an attribute of God that angels and other beings experience. That's why Satan cannot be forgiven. Because mercy is not within his jurisdiction. And to tell you how determined God is for us to be partakers of his mercy, he tied his mercy with time. So that every 24 hours, as time resets, his mercy also resets. It's in your Bible. He says his mercies are new every morning. Hallelujah. The mercy of God is not a license for licentiousness, but is an advantage. The mercy of God gives me guarantee that in spite of my frailties, I will still be able to birth the purposes of God. The mercy of God is a covenant that we had with David. As a result of the desire of David to build him a house, he came and he entered a covenant of mercy with David. He says, no matter what you do, David, I have covenanted with you. Saul did not have his mercy. That's why he lost his throne. Saul was more well behaved than David. Oh yes, read your Bible. Saul was by far more well behaved than David. But the mercies of David, you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. All healing. All deliverances, all restorations stem from that department of His mercy. It is on the strength of God's mercy that we can guarantee that someone who has been oppressed, that a family that legally gave themselves to the devil as lawful captives, when it has to do with victory over captivity, is not power you need, it's the mercy of God. There are spirits you don't just bind and cast. There are rules of engagement. There is a kind of captivity called lawful captivity. It is this kind that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. For instance, the legal access that Satan had over us by reason of the fall of Adam could not be casted away. No. God did not use power to save man. It was the blood and his death. His power was demonstrated in that mercy. Are we together now? So tonight, I have two assignments in this place. I have just completed one. To challenge you that you can become a mobile Gather the elements that they gathered. Obey what they obeyed. That glory will rest upon you the same way it rested upon them. An individual can be a carrier of that presence. You can take that presence everywhere. Anybody who drags you who is a Philistine will soon know what he carried. You don't have to tell people I am dangerous. Let the devil try you. And what happened to the Philistines? When they took the ark, they stole it. The ark that was not talking was bringing havoc in the camp of the enemy. But when the same ark was taken to the house of Obed Edom, in 90 days, 90 days, that means if you are employed, 
in three months of your being in that office, there are things that should begin to happen as a testament that the ark has arrived. Like I was teaching you yesterday, please, this is not some Pentecostal motivation. Believe me, it is true. You can be a living, breathing carrier of this ark. That way, when people are tired of trouble, they invite you to their house. Who do we invite to just sit down for five minutes? And you just sit down in their house, and they say, just to say, God bless you. And you stand up and they start rejoicing. Because right there, the five minutes visitation, it was not just a man that came. The man is the wood, the earthen vessel, but there is the excellency of what has come upon it. When you stretch your hands to heal the sick, it is not the mortal hands of a man. No, no, no. Just help those under the anointing. When you stretch your hands to deliver, the demons are not seeing hands. You are the one who is seeing a hand. The demons are seeing the same act. That same act. Let the weight of your glory cover. Let the light of your river Let the truth of your kingdom Let it rain, let it rain in us Let the way of your glory Listen, listen One day I was in the place of prayer and I was caught up in the realm of the spirit and I began to hear the song of angels and this was the song that I heard let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth 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 Hear me you're here in this place tonight before I begin to pray for the sick I know that our time is gone in the construction of the ark there are elements the first of them that I taught you is the wood the wood had to avail itself to be used to create that habitation there are people here scattered across the overflow. All of the overflows following online, flowing from whatever nation. Before we even begin to minister to people, I just sense in my heart to make the altar call very quickly. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I desire to be this leading ark of God's presence. Perhaps you were not here yesterday or you were here yesterday but you had not made up your mind to make this decision. Our time is fast spent. Here's how we're going to do it. Every overflow, when I make the call, you just go to the front of your screen and you stand there. For time's sake. I'm going to count one to five. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, I want to avail myself for the sake of your glory. The glory of the only begotten, even full of grace and truth. You want me to pray for you before we start? I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain. 
I'm going to count five. Run and come and stand. One. Run to Jesus. Make sure you understand what you are doing. You're coming out to give your life to Jesus Christ. Two. All the overflows, please come out. I hear the chains falling. Hey, I hear the chains falling. Keep coming. Let it end tonight. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. My God, I already sense such, such power in this place. I'm going to pray for you, all of you who are in front. Many of you are rededicating your lives to Jesus. The Bible says, let it be known to you the message of Peter, that this same Jesus has been exalted today as both Lord and Christ. This is the one we preach, Christ crucified, Christ resurrected. Many of you are coming here tonight. God is giving you a new beginning. Do not be ashamed. We are a family. Those following online, you who is following from your home, you're following everywhere across the globe, God is giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord. Hallelujah. Please lift your right hand. Say after me as loud as you can. All of you in front, all the overflow, same, and those following in your home. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I believe in you. That you are the son of God. You obtain your mercy. And I obtain your grace. I ask. That you forgive me. And in the name of Jesus. I declare. That I am a recipient. Of eternal life. Jesus Christ. Is my savior. My lord. And my king. From today, I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Thank you, Father, for these ones that you have brought to yourself. I pray in the name of Jesus. By the authority of Scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that He gives you a new experience from today. I commend you to the ministry of the Word and the ministry of the Spirit. I pray that you be established and grounded in righteousness. And that you become mighty vessels for the master's use. In Jesus name I pray. Now very quickly, just make sure you obtain a card. There will be counselors giving you a card. Once you obtain it, you can return back to your seat and just be patient. And follow the remaining part of the meeting. Hallelujah. Please everybody rise. We have a few minutes. I want to pray for you tonight. It's a miracle service. And it's going to be a very quick one because our time is gone. Please let them return back to their state. Just be patient with them. So let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. One more time. Let hope. Let it rise. God has trembled in the holy light. One more time. Let it Let it rise. God has trembled in your holy light. Hallelujah. The Lord, by what He is going to be doing within the few minutes that we have, miracles and signs and wonders are a message from God to His people. Two messages, basically. Number one, every time you see a miracle, it's a revelation of the love of God to His people. He's telling you that I have loved you with an everlasting love. And I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Number two, miracles are an attestation 
as to the fact that he is still Lord. I shared with you that there are four things that a man must have dominion over to be called Lord. Number one is the earth. Number two, the fullness, the resources. Number three, the mind control systems. And number four, the inhabitants. And the Bible says the earth is the Lord's. The fullness thereof, the walls and they that dwell therein. We are going to be praying for the sick. I will be ministering to you. We will do that very fast within the time that we have. Please let your heart be open. You didn't come to waste your time. And those in the overflows, I like you to open up your heart. Knowing that the power of God will touch you where you are. And the Lord himself will bring you victory. Are you ready for tonight? Lord, give me a visitation. Please pray in one minute. Give me a visitation that will change my life. Give me a visitation that will change my life. Hallelujah. 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 Now, let me start by praying for people who have been oppressed. There are people here who have been oppressed of the devil. When Peter was preaching in the house of Cornelius, you don't have to come out, don't worry. I'll, I'll just give you the instructions on what to do. The Bible says, Peter was preaching and he said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, with the Holy Ghost, he said, and with power. And the Bible says he went about healing not all they who were sick. You call it sickness. He called it oppression. And it tells you the oppressor, the devil, for God was with him. There is nowhere I find the devil that I will leave him to go free. For oppressing lives and oppressing destinies. I want to pray for you now. And please, as much as possible, ushers now, please listen. Whether you are an usher or not, I want you to do well to just cooperate. Some of you are members. The ushers may be limited, but I want you to please help them. Anyone who is under the anointing close to you, please do well and be your brother's keeper so that we minimize people enjoying themselves. Are we together? The Lord Jesus appeared to me many years ago, and he gave me an instruction and he told me that every city he would send me to, and every nation and every territory, the lights that came from him to me, that there must be someone in that meeting that that same light will come upon. And I believe tonight, please help them. I believe that this light, it brings healing, it brings miracles. I want to pray for you now. There are people who have been oppressed of the devil, Please, I want you to bring them out now. These people I'm about to pray for. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. Every oppression that is not of God, every demonic orchestration of darkness that has sat on the destinies of people in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God, as you shout, it is the healer, the shout that brings down Jericho. I decree and declare at the mention of that name, the one exalted as Lord and Christ, let there be deliverance for you right now. Are you ready? Please bring them out. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I command every devil now, let their destinies go. Bring them out. Every devil, I command liberty, freedom by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Wherefore, God has so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. I decree and declare, be delivered now. Orchestrations of ancestry, activities of witchcraft connected to bloodline. Tonight we come by the rod of the higher priesthood. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Bring them out. I caught every devil.
We are still praying. He na paradu si atadada. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Now, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing families. There are whole families that have been under bondage. I want to pray now. There's fire coming from Kapaka to Katea. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus. Every family here. Under the sound of my voice. That has been under any demonic siege. At the count of three. Let there be liberty. One. Two. Three. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Bring them out. Help them please. In a paracos catabranda cataca de cata, Sacros catibarus the Siena cata, Emprecate catebala. Let an end come in the name of Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, He went about doing good. Hallelujah. We are praying. Who is Ebenezer? Our time is up. I have to pray for the sick. But I'm hearing a name Ebenezer. Who is Ebenezer? Ebenezer, you are wearing like a blue, like a check shirt. Is that Ebenezer? Is there someone like that? What's, please verify. Don't match the people. Ebenezer. Where are you coming from? I'm coming from this side. I want to pray for you. Where are you coming from? I mean your state. Ekiti state. Ekiti state. I want to pray for you. That everything that is connected to witchcraft, I stretch my hands, be delivered now. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I bring you life. That lady, this one, you on red, lifting your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oppression goes forever over your life. Sir, is this your wife? I'm seeing the Lord take something out of her body. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing something leaving her body that the devil has planted to destroy her. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God, I command that devil, I call you by name. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, Whosoever the Son sets free, is free indeed therefore we curse every devil madam i'm here to pray for the sick but i stretch my hands right now let there be a miracle for you in the presence of your husband don't worry she doesn't have to come to the front in the name of jesus be healed now be healed now be healed now be healed now is it amarachi is there something like that Amarachi, who is that? Amarachi, I'm hearing a name. Amarachi. The woman I'm seeing is not very tall. You bob your hair. You bob your hair. Amarachi, is there someone like that? What is your name? Oh. Your lifting has come. Oh, oh, oh. Your has come. Look at me, my dear. Where are you coming from? Ababa. Ababa. Where is that? What state is that? Okay, here. I want to pray for you and your family. Huh? You are the father. Baba, come. The Lord is visiting this family. You see why it's good to invite people to church? Because God can just save a whole nation. This is not about a man of God being powerful. I'm seeing one more person. You are three. Who is that? I'm seeing one more person connected to this family. In the name of Jesus, 
Where? I invited him. The song we I don't know where he is. Because I'm seeing three people, not two. Where is the third person? What's the name? If, if it's not here because of time, we just have to pray so that we'll redeem the time. Sir, can I pray for you? You love Jesus? Very much. This is, you see, the beauty of coming to church. I was glad when they said unto me. God. The house of God is not a nuisance to civilization. We are a blessing. I pray for you right now. You and your daughter and all who are connected to you, sir. I pray for you. Four years, you are yet to have a child. This is what I'm saying. Four years. Who is that person? Please make sure you are married. Four years. Husband and wife, you are both in the choir. Husband and wife, place your hand. God is going to give you a baby boy. Help her. Out now. I release you in the name of Jesus Christ. Celebrate your miracle. The hand of God. Marvelous hand of God. You too? How many years? Four years. Is your husband here? No, he's not here, sir. Four years. You're trusting God. You believe in miracles? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. What's your name? Pinedu. Who is the head of this choir? Are you the head of the choir? Like the, like the coordinator? This because this is what I'm seeing on her. Because the Lord is speaking to me and saying he's taking away the shame of the coordinator. And I'm saying because she's not dressed like I'm not seeing her dress in the same uniform like them. My dear, in the name of Jesus, we come by the God of heaven and we declare, let your womb be open now. Let it be open now. In the name of Jesus Christ. This woman is out too. For the same reason, I'll pray for you. Please don't come out at random. If you make this, let's, let's just, don't worry. God is going to visit you. Are we together now? God is going to visit you. The power of God is coming on someone at the ministers, just one person. I just saw light. The Lord is shifting you into a new season. That's what the Lord is telling me. He's shifting you into a new season. I pray for you, all of you who are here for the sake of time, we have to rush. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a businessman here that God wants to restore. You have lost a lot of money this year. I have to pray for you. I don't mean somebody who is starting. Don't worry. I know most, this is a business place. We are talking about the East here. So I'm sure everybody will come out if I've said, but just settle down there. There is a specific person that the Lord is revealing to me. I don't know what you do. Is it, is it something that has to do with construction? I'm seeing that you've lost a lot of money. If there is someone like that, I want to pray for you while I quickly pray for them. Father, everyone who is in the name of Jesus, like Eli. Madam, this woman lifting her hands. I'm seeing oil coming on your head. This is what I'm seeing. The Lord is revealing this to me. Right now, I stretch my hands and I declare... In the name of Jesus, let everything that represents oppression in your life and your family, let it come to an end right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it come to an end right now. There is someone holding photos. You came here with photos, pictures of your family members. Please, if there's someone like that, please verify so that it doesn't look like well.
if, if it's not, I'm not saying if you have photos in your bag, you are holding photos. Let me pray for you. It's just the instruction that the Lord is giving to me. For everyone here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, I declare a miracle for you right now. In Jesus' name I pray. And sir, I pray for you and your daughter and this. Hold on. Is he your son or your brother? He's my brother. Same father, same mother. Younger brother? Younger brother. Who is Christopher? Christopher. What's your name? Christopher. Arid. From where? I'm from Amechala. Amechala. I'm going to pray for you. Because, uh, please don't feel I'm not a prophet of doom. God will save you. But I'm looking at this man and I'm seeing him inside a coffin. I'm not, that's why I said, don't be afraid. This is where ministers of life. I'm just revealing to you. You see the power of scripture. Because it is written is greater than I saw. No matter what it is that you see, dominion is the ability to submit what you saw to it is written. This is how ministers of the gospel, the administration of the prophetic must be done with respect to the authority of scripture. That means regardless what you see, if it's inconsistent with what is written, that becomes your assignment. To make what you saw or what you heard, turn and become what is written. That's what it means to bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. This is how prophecy edifies the body. When prophecy submits to it is written, it now begins to edify. Otherwise, it will plant fear. If I leave this man right now, I have not blessed him. I will not only plant fear, I will plant fear to his family members who are watching. But dominion is the ability to bring any other thing, including what you saw, to the obedience of Christ. I'm saying this because the Lord is also helping to train people in administering the gifts of the Spirit. So that we don't end up planting fear and a conference like this is done and people are worse than they were before it started. No. The character of the operation of Scripture is that it must take away fear. Because God is love and perfect love casts out fear. In the name of Jesus, sir. No, I'm, I'm, don't worry. I lay my hands upon you. As a point of contact, who is this one? Your wife? Who is this lady? Okay. Don't worry, sir. Wherever they are, as you are standing here, by faith, we agree for this family. Let there be transformation right now. Yeah. Sir, in the name of Jesus, I declare that anything that is inconsistent with the character of the Christ in your life, we declare that it comes to an end now. Yeah. For all of you who have photos, I lay my hands on those photos prophetically. And in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, let there be miracles for you. Let there be miracles for you. In Jesus' name. Please return to your seat. I want to pray for the sick now very quickly. Please return to your seat so that we'll have space. Just believe that it is done. I believe in miracles. I'm a miracle myself. We make Miracle walk, promise tree, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We call you away, make miracle walk, promise tree, light in the darkness. My God, that is. Wow. I want to pray for the sick, but the Lord is giving me an instruction. I'll pray for the sick. Please, I want to be your brother's keeper over this prayer I want to pray. And I will tell you why. Every meeting I go to, God gives me this instruction. Please, whether you are an usher or not, I want you to just help the people. There is a grace for speed that can come upon an individual, that can come upon ministries, the Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he ran on barefoot. He overtook the chariots of Ahab, even down to Jezreel. Truly, God can compress time. Dominion over time is real dominion. Speed is a system of advantage given by God to men to help us actualize destiny. I want to pray. The reason why I'm saying you should help people is because people will start running. 
I want you to just hold them, bring them out here quickly. We are going to do this very fast. I apologize for the time, sir, sincerely. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Father, in the name of ah, my goodness, my God. Look, I'm just seeing fire rest on people. Right now, I declare, at the count of three, may this grace was be. Help them, please. Help them, please. Help them, please. Help them, please. I decree and declare, every delay over anyone's life, I come by the road of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, receive speed. One, two, three. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Inside, outside, the overflow. Take that grace. Speed in ministry. Speed in business. Speed in your accomplishments. I take 10 years and I put it in one year. I take one year and I put it in Apakatukata. Kretekete Bakatoskata. 10 years in one year. One year in one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare over families here. Receive speed in Jesus' name. 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 I am seeing fire fall on the choir. This is what I'm just seeing. Take that fire. Right now, help them please. Take that fire. Take that fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Speed is coming upon your life. Speed is coming upon your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone held by any chain of delay. In the name that is above all names. I'm praying again. For individuals and for families. I break that chain. Let that chain of delay be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. Hear me. When the glory of God came upon Aaron's rod, in one night without a root, it bordered. One night without a root. Everything that has refused to walk in your life. We stand under the corporate anointing here. And in the name of Jesus. It's a master we have called all night. Nevertheless, I speak to you. Go back and expel. Go back and expel. Go back and expel. Go back and expel. Please lay your hands where you are trusting God for healing right now. I want you to believe in the healing power of Jesus. For all of you who have come out here, I declare that this grace you have contacted, let it begin to speak immediately. 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 Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. Jennifer. I'm hearing a name Jennifer. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is rolling reproach from your family. He's rolling away reproach right now. Rolling away reproach right now. In the name of Jesus. He said, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And the elder tapped me and said, weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah. Even the root of David is worthy. Hallelujah. Let this be the beginning of seasons of speedy achievement. Please lay your hands. Wherever you are trusting God for a miracle, I want to pray for the sick now. 
Sir, this is our father. I, I presume you look like an Indian family. Am I right on that? I want to pray for you. The Lord wants to take away sickness. I'm looking at a thermometer go up and down. This has to do with high blood pressure. I want to pray for you. You believe in miracles, sir? Can I pray for you? You can just stay there, no problem. You don't have to come out. I will pray for you. I just, just to let you know that God is bringing a visitation. God is bringing a visitation. Please lay your hands where you are trusting God for healing. You can stand in for someone too. Those of you who are in front here, please go back to your seat rejoicing. Anyone, please go back to your seat rejoicing. Anyone here who, if it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. Please do that. All the overflows, just lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle right now. I believe in miracles. I truly do. I believe in the manifestation of God's power. Help her please. Some of you are already healed. Right from when you were coming. Overflows. Lay your hands everywhere. I want to pray for you. Now listen. For the sake of time. I do not want and I do not intend to stretch us beyond time. But very quickly for the sake of time. This is what I want us to do. As soon as I pray for you, some of you checking yourself from the time you came out here, there are all kinds of miracles that have happened. But very quickly, as soon as I pray for you, the power of God is going to touch you. You will be healed. I want, the moment you confirm your miracle, I want you to quickly run and stand here. Please, if we can have one or two pastors here to just help us on that. We'll do it very fast. Take a few of the testimonies. We'll do the final impartation and we're done for the night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. After a loud shout, the healing power of Jesus will begin to move. Not your shout. There is someone under the power of the Holy Spirit right now who will shout loud to the hearing of everybody. Honestly, sometimes I don't know why God does that. Now I'm ready to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, lay your hands. Agree with me in prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the Kapakapos Katepata. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I take authority over every devil of darkness. The spirit behind disease, sickness and infirmity. I declare let God's people go free now. Everywhere following wherever you are, I declare unto you, be healed right now. Be healed right now. Every bone condition, be healed right now. If you're here and you're on a wheelchair or you're using crutches or on a stretcher, lift it up and stand up now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every blind eyes, I command be open now. Every blind eyes, be open now. Every deaf ear, be open now. Every blood infection, every blood in Apakaposkata, I'm seeing God healing people of hepatitis B. Be healed right now. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone with a condition. Um, let it not embarrass you. You go to toilets, but you cannot use the toilet. This is not just pile. This is a situation. I don't know what medical condition that is, but it's difficult for you. You, you can't even use the toilet. Right now, the power of God is coming upon you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with severe pain around your back. In fact, many people, not just one person. The power of God is touching you right now. Someone's left eye. You didn't used to see well with your left eye. But I pray for you right now. Clarity of vision right now. 
there's someone even though i've prayed for people with bone condition but you can't even lift your hands freely like this i don't know what the problem is i rebuke that devil peptic ulcer be healed now just help those under the anointing my grace be healed now every stomach ulcers and all kinds of ulcers be healed right now help her help her help her be healed right now out of her now out of her in the name of jesus christ hear me anyone with any growth in any part of your body whether growth around your breast area your abdominal area every growth in your body I command that growth to disappear now. There's someone here, I don't know what was diagnosed in your head. Like inside, not, not on your head. Inside, I, I don't know if it's a, whatever medical condition. But in the name of Jesus right now, I declare unto you, be healed now. Be healed now. Lower abdominal pain Severe pain Help them Lower abdominal pain The Lord is healing you right now My God There are all kinds of miracles I'm looking at someone Your uncle just here There is a severe pain there As soon as I, I'm done praying Check yourself now You will find out that pain is gone the Lord is showing me someone You have a problem with your throat You know how when you swallow something And it doesn't go You keep feeling like there's something on your throat Help her please This is how someone has been feeling But right now after this prayer At the instance of this prayer That devil lets you go forever Now for the sake of time Whether or not I mention your case Be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name Be healed in Jesus name All the overflows Be healed in Jesus name Across the nations of the earth Be healed in Jesus name There are already people coming out Now please we have five minutes for this I want you to check yourself While we are rejoicing Hallelujah You are going to give us one hot Igbo praise let the devil know that Jesus is moving in the east. While that is happening, I like you to come out. Please check yourself. The moment you find out there's a miracle, come out. Miracles are happening here. Are you celebrating miracles? Please check yourself and make your way to the front. Choir, can you help us in one minute, two or three minutes? Just give us a song of praise as we celebrate the magnificent hand of God. Go ahead, please, very quickly. Keep coming, check yourself and make your way to the front Those in the overflows If they are coming for testimony Please allow them Usher's protocol, allow them to come Very, very quickly Please check them Let there be a group of people who will check them and confirm Keep coming, God bless you Keep coming Keep coming Miracles are happening in this place
celebrating Jesus here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated for a few minutes. Yes, please. Very quickly. Are you ready? Very quickly. Your name and what God has done very quickly. Yes, please. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. I'm Kolakia Osakuni. Okay. Okay, so... Straight to the point. Yes. What happened to you? If anything you said... That we should lay our hands on the place that's pain, that we need healing. Yes. I laid my hands on my head because I've been having this, I don't know, is it migraine, headache. It's so, I and couldn't What happened now? It. And immediately, I jumped dead. He jumped dead after this headache. I said, I'm so happy. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy this kind of instant miracle in my Hallelujah. life. Like, I even had, like, eyesight. I, I couldn't see, I, I wouldn't see what's written on the, I have glasses, you know. So, I'm trying to be like, I'm seeing You can see clearly now. Are you giving Everywhere. Jesus praise? praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again. Celebrate Jesus very quickly. Praise the Lord. I'm Reverend Prince Alice. For more than 10 years now, I've been having this pain on my left shoulder that I can't even do anything. You're a man of God. Me. Yes, sir. But now, lift it up. Let the it. devil see you lift it up. I can't feel it anymore. I can't feel it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the Lord will bless you to never return. And may your ministry step into a new season. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Very quickly. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I'm Orifra Christiana. And I had lower back pain for some months now. But now I feel so good. Completely. I'm Bend down. Now. Check yourself. Any pain. Any pain. Completely. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you again. Yes, please. Go ahead, sir. Praise the Lord. Also, I'm, good news, sir. I'm the businessman you mentioned who has, been, who has had serious losses. Secondly, I have my left eye. I have received serious healing on my left eye and serious abdominal pain just left. What happened to you now? Free. Gone completely. completely In the name of Jesus, I declare restoration for your business. Whatever the issue is, we come as the parliament of heaven. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare an end comes now. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Very Sir, quickly. When you mention the ankle problem. This That's right. Problem. This man knows how to do this thing. God bless you. Yes, go ahead, Pastor. Hallelujah. Sir, you made mention of the ankle. Um, I had an ankle dislocation. I couldn't even train. Ankle dislocation. Right now, For how long? No more. For some weeks right now. I couldn't Check yourself. Train. Jump. Any pain. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare you are free right now. Yes, sir. No, no, no. Yes. My name is Pastor John Tumobi. I have this terrible back pain. He has been there for many years, uh, for, for a long time now. Every time I wake up to pray in the morning, I can't, I can't, every time, even when I go for programs, yes. I'll be stretched. But this night is gone and I'm here. In the name of Jesus. Look what God, you are, oh, you are the man who was standing here. Oh, okay, I thought you were the one who was standing here. In the name of Jesus, Pastor, I declare over you and over your ministry. Look at me, sir. You have a church? Can I pray for you? There, you, that's your wife. Don't worry, you don't have to come. If God touches him, he will show that you, both of you are one. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the power of the Lord come upon you and your ministry. I release grace for the next season. In the name of Jesus, receive that anointing. The same way God healed you here. I pray for you. I'm seeing fire come on your hands, sir. In the name of Jesus, let it be a new season for you. Madam, as he's touching you, he's touching your husband, and both of you will begin to operate in this grace. God bless you, sir. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Oh, this is our daddy. Sorry, sir. This man had been feeling headache all day because of high blood pressure. As you have high as, blood pressure? Yes. yes as soon as you mentioned the high blood case, he laid his hands on his head. And the the baba that came here. Yes, I did not take medicine because, of, because I was bringing my daughter here. So while I was here, my headache was my head was telling me that you did not take medicine today, and so it is going to continue. Yes, I right. said it is the word of God that will heal it. That's right. So when you said we should place our hands there, immediately I placed my hand there. I am free. In the name of Jesus, it will never return, never return to you again. In Jesus' name, I pray. Yes, please. Very quickly. Young man with the throat problem you mentioned. Throat condition. Yes. How long? What's your name? Um, Toby Wazo. I uh -huh. most of yesterday in the hospital. My throat. I couldn't swallow. Like I couldn't even eat. But when you were when you were praying, you mentioned it in your life. I'm can, I can talk now. I was whispering in the morning. But now I can talk. Praise the Lord. 
What will you eat this night now? What is what kind of food will let the devil know that you are well? May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please, the next person very quickly. No, don't give him the mic. If you give them mic, they will not just just hold it for them, sir. Yes. I play, I play football frequently, sir. You are a footballer? Yes, I play football frequently, sir. For? I play football frequently. Okay. So, I have this pain on my left knee. A knee pain? Yes, sir. For how long? Since this year, sir, actually. Okay. And right now? When check you yourself. Okay, check yourself. Okay, sir. Check. You play for who? You professionally? No, 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 no. Or you just play football? Oh, I thought it's professionally. I would have prayed for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. No. May the Lord bless you. Whatever you are doing professionally, may God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Yes, sir. This woman has had what doctor called clavicular spondylosis. Come she again. couldn't raise her arm for two years. And you couldn't raise your hand. For two raise years. it now. Look at this. Let us speak. What is I can hardly sleep on this. Five. Each time I sleep, I wake up with pain. And right now, I can't feel the pain. Ah! Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, it will never return to you again. Amen. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. He had he's had pain for uh, around his uh, private region for over two years. Oh my God. Immediately she, he came in and he started praying. It disappeared. A miracle for you now. Anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ, this healing remains permanent, my dear brother. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, for the sake of time, there's, there's a long queue here. We'll, we'll just take two or three, three, and then we'll just pray. Tomorrow, during Reverend George's session, you can share it. The most important thing is that God visited the people. It doesn't matter how or through who it happened. We give him all the glory. Yes, please. This young lad, he said he's had stomach pain for three days now. But this when boy, we are praying, the stomach pain disappeared. You know I love children. What's your name? Kesta, where is it? Where's the kester? How old are you? Eight. Eight. Mm. May God make you such a smart child. You will never do anything twice to succeed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. You are healed. You remain healed forever. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. He said his heart and his eyes has been paining him for over for a long time now. And How long? My, I don't know. As it has been long, but I had a headache this as I was coming, but it disappeared as you were praying. Completely. Completely. It's gone. May the Lord bless you. This tall gentleman, are you a footballer? Yes, he looks like... Because I was laying my hands there, but as soon as you mentioned it, it disappeared. Oh, come, check yeah. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Yes, let's just... He has told me a myriad of things. You are born in to share a testimony. <laughs> um, at time, yes, go ahead. He has told me a myriad of things. Okay. From stomach ulcers to everything. But the one that is striking is that his vision, one of the eyes could not see properly. Completely. But he said, one, so than the other. one was seeing better and than now, the other. But right now, completely. He says he has 20 20 vision. You can see everything here. This one saw better than the other. But I, I, I could notice for as long as I can remember. When yes. I'm just all, all alone, I could just close this and I noticed that this one saw better than this. Well, it wasn't really a problem for me, but now I can see 20 In the name of Jesus, perfection for you. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Um, I'm Kofi. And I've had this pain on my ankle for as long as I can remember. Pain on your ankle again? Yeah, this one. Yes. I don't know when it started. I just know I can't And right now, what happened to you? When you said, um, when, at the end of the prayer, that everything is going to be fine. But during the prayer, I was still feeling the pain. And I felt, ah, are you sure? And right now, right now, what happened to you? Like, Check yourself. It's gone completely. I, she will never return to you again. This, this gentleman, okay. My name is Humble. The last time you come to Opera Square, I was my, with my medical report. I lay it down here. Since 2008, I was having chest pain. I have go to a different lab. Or they will tell me that my ring. What happened now? What happened now? Now I can turn to the completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, it never returns to you. Now, for all of you, whether you have come out to testify or not, we give Jesus the glory for all that has happened and we declare that these miracles remain permanent in your life in Jesus name 
And for those of you who receive miracles online, you can do well to let the church know that you have been touched by the power of God. Please rise up. Let's do the final impartation so we can wrap up the meeting for tonight. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed tonight? Please do not forget the teaching that you heard tonight in addition to the powerful sessions that you'll be having tomorrow and then on Sunday. Make sure that your heart is open. The conference is not over. There's tomorrow's session in the morning and then on Sunday, powerful sessions with the Spirit of God. I want to pray and declare over your life. An impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It is possible for you to receive a grace you did not come to this meeting with. That is the essence of conferences like this. That you hear the word, but then you are empowered by the Spirit. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2, verse 2 says, And the Spirit entered into me when He spake unto me and set me upon my feet. The Holy Spirit comes to confirm the word. I stretch my hands and I decree and declare over everyone under the sound of my voice the grace that you will need to demonstrate the reality of the fact that God lives in you. I release that grace upon you now. I release that grace upon you now. Hear me? Everywhere you have been inefficient, I decree and declare the grace that makes for excellence. There is such a grace. May that grace rest upon you now. Every closed door that has refused to open over your life and your destiny. I join my faith with all the servants of God here and we declare, may that door be opened now. May that door be opened now. Please hear me. Where you have failed again and again and again, we release grace upon you. Because today you have become the act of God in experience. May your results show that you carry divine presence. Let me pray for your family members who are not here. You see, in this kingdom, the law is as for me and my house. If you are blessed alone, you are not blessed. It has to extend to you. It says, for this promise is unto you and to your children to your children's children as many as are afar off even those that the Lord will call I pray for you if there is anyone connected to you who is going through any season that requires the administration of God's power in the name of Jesus we bring those negative seasons to an end now Some of you have lost time. Some of you have lost things. I decree and declare, let there be supernatural restoration. If there is anyone here that is trusting God for a job, or trusting God for some sort of establishment, structural establishment, in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, be established now. I want to declare advancement over your life. The Bible says it was the Lord that caused Moses and Aaron to advance. It is God that causes men to advance. Men do not just move. I pray for you. Where you have, you have encompassed this mountain long enough, therefore I prophesy, go higher. I prophesy, go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Please hear me. I speak to you in the name of Jesus, like it happened to the Philistines. Anybody who troubles you goes down instantly. Please believe it. We are wrapping up. Can I pray for you? If there is anyone holding what is yours. Tonight in this place, we overturn. We overturn. We overturn. 
will be overturned until it enters your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here and any family here marked for death that you will not see the end of December in the name of Jesus we cast the spirit of death over your life I prophesy over your life whether you are flying in the air whether you are going on road whether it is by the sea be divinely protected in the name of Jesus Can I pray for your prayer life as I round up? Whatever has destroyed your passion for God, your passion for the ministry of prayer, in the name of Jesus, this night, we set your prayer life on fire again. We set your prayer life on fire again. The grace to pray, the grace to be consistent, the discipline to travail, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your word study life. Whatever has destroyed your passion for the word. In the name of Jesus, let there be restoration this night. Hear me. I want to destroy wrong associations from your life as we round up. Just help those under the anointing. Jonah entered a boat and made people to lose so many things. He didn't talk associations have prophetic implications jesus entered the same boat and yet he saved many people from destruction hallelujah apostle paul was in a boat and he told the people do not fear an angel has appeared to me he has told me there shall be no loss and they went safely and arrived at an island called melita i pray for you anyone who is connected to your destiny who is carrying a negative prophetic atmosphere i separate you from them right now hallelujah finally anyone here and any family here suffering from oppressions connected to ancestry connected to bloodline patterns you are seeing what happened to others coming the bible declares that we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation therefore in the name of jesus be delivered from everything connected to ancestry dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.